Hello and welcome to today's episode 2 of Talking Tech. For those who have already been here, you know what Talking Tech is. But for those who don't, what's Talking Tech? So, Talking Tech is an initiative by GVPA Club to shed light on technology pathways at beginner levels. Here we bring in speakers from all walks of technology to introduce to our students and also our friends how to get to how to get started on various technologies and for today we have Manu S. Pillai who is a junior year IT student from Bharatiya Vijapit and a an evident computer vision geek and a deep learning practitioner and Manu the screen is all yours now so uh, hello guys, Manu here. So as uh, Saket introduced me, I, I guess uh, there is no need for me to introduce myself once again. So thank you so much for having me, Saket, and um, hi all once again. So uh, I hope you all are here, right? Uh, I can have, I do have your chat right in the side. So uh, if at all there is something that you need to share or ask, you're still there, right? So uh, so uh, for you know, today we have to cover a lot of things. So um, without wasting any time, I would directly, you know, move into our thing today. So um, so basically, I will give a little bit of overview of, of uh, what exactly we want to achieve today. So uh, first of all, I will give you a little, you can say, uh, presentation on to what computer vision is basically. And and uh, without, you know, wasting much time in uh, showing these kind of PPT and things like that, we will directly jump into some uh, some work today so we'll learn something new and uh while we are actually coding things so we will be learning uh the 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 under the hood things as well so uh that's my way of you know approach of teaching you or uh, or uh, letting you know or getting you into a new topic right so uh so let's just start uh so uh let's just start uh guys uh, so as its name is computer vision 101 right so uh, what exactly is a computer vision? So as you, this particular meme, like it's a, it's a very popular meme says, computer vision is everywhere. So it's basically everywhere from your uh, mobile phones to your smartphones, oh, to, to your smart TVs, uh, to everything that you today hold as a technology, there is some way computer vision is involved in that. Even a QR code, we can say, or QR code reader, when there are something like that is inbuilt uh, with the computer vision technology, right? So uh, just so that uh, you know, I have uh, written all these things in the PPT itself, just so that because if I'm speaking at yourself and you are uh, losing some audio or some quality, then you can even actually refer to the screen itself. So computer vision is nothing but uh, the automated extraction of information from images. So uh, basically, what it means is, given an image, if I if I if I want to you know reason for something in the image, then uh, to to reason about that, you need to understand the image first, right? So these uh, understanding the image. And uh, reasoning for all the, or you can say reasoning for all the information that I want. So all these techniques come under computer vision. Basically, all of these are colloquially known as computer vision. So uh, as it said, information can mean anything from uh, 3D models, from camera position, or object detection and recognition. So we'll discuss what object recognition, and, uh, you know, detection recognition is. So uh, just just now, you just have to, you know, be aware of these kind of terms. That's it. Object detection, recognition, to grouping. And searching image contents grouping is basically nothing but if, if, if let's say uh, given some similar images you have to group it together. right uh, you just have to group images together like uh, we have we do it in google image sets so if at all in the in the google image sets if at all i provide an image like this it right so uh, that 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 finds all the similar images from the entire web and uh, shows you the result right so that is something uh, what computer vision is all about so uh, that is a part of computer vision, which is known as clustering or things like that. I won't go into that uh, terminology, but that's just only masses of things, right? So at an abstract level, the goal of computer vision problems is uh, to use the observed image data or the image that I'm providing, basically, to infer something about the world that we have discussed just right now. So let's just say if I'm showing an image of a cat, and I want to know my computer to tell me the breed of the cat, or let's say, or the color of the cat, or, or, or whether it's a cat itself or not, so these kind of things uh, is what computer vision is involved in. So uh, those people who are like pretty much into computer vision or have heard this particular term, I might have heard also a very popular uh, another term which is very popular, uh, which is image processing. 
right? A lot of people just say image processing or digital image processing, and they, they say computer vision. So, uh, so those people who are like in the beginner level, they might be thinking they might be having a confusion that okay, uh, what is computer vision and image processing, or how they are related, or you know, even they are related at all, or are they same, or are they different? So, uh, basically, like this computer vision and image processing are both of these same. So, image processing is basically uh, not about understanding the image, if at all, understanding the image or under understanding the content of the image. So, uh, that's all in computer vision itself. Image processing basically uh, creating a new image from the image you already have, like uh, converting from color to uh, you can say black and white, or you can say cropping the image or increasing the brightness or contrast things like that. So like those people who are like everybody from engineering field only, you know. So you all will be having a subject like signals and systems and things like that. So uh, signal processing only, but uh, you know uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a different manner. That's what image processing is. Digital image processing is. So then, uh, then comes the relation between computer vision and digital image processing. Both are different, but you can say that computer vision systems, like to reason about a particular content of an image or, or to reason about uh, the spatial relations in an image, we need image processing or we do some image processing prior to you know putting these algorithms onto work. So that is basically how uh, both of these are related. So. Um, uh, Typically, we will see some uh, tasks in computer vision so, so that we get to you know understand the computer vision a little bit more. Uh, so basically, what computer vision actually has in uh, you know in, in the industry is optical character recognition is a good task and uh, a famous task and a challenging task itself in uh, computer vision. So what optical character recognition is nothing but you can say that given an image of some written characters. Let's just say you can see me see in my video that uh, I have October first written over here. It's an image of some. So I hope you are able to see that. But there are, or you can say there's some graphics uh, where you click a picture of some graphics, right, in, in, on a wall or something, or, or you click a, a picture of a textbook, and there are characters over there, right? So uh, as humans, we are uh, so much, you can say, advanced. Our brain is so much advanced that it, 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 it seems like it's uh, not even a challenge like, to uh, detect all these things. So uh, yeah, J, J means OMR sheet. Uh, I just came up with that. Uh, you know, that came into my mind. So J means OMR sheet. So uh, that is basically they, they say OMR, particular mark recognition. You can say that particularly mark that particular. And then there are some you can say uh, some stripes on the left side that is basically for the alignment. So but in optical character recognition, uh, the alignment stripes are, are not always there. That is another challenge in the real world. So uh, so you 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 very well know about Google Lens, right? So if you point Google Lens to anything in the world, I mean, I mean they have so such such a good work there. So if, if you point that uh, you know Google Lens to anywhere in the in, in, in any any text, you will particularly see that uh, Google Lens is able to you know segment that out, like uh, it will draw a box there, and they say what's written in there, right? Uh, so uh, how is it even a challenge? If at all those who are not uh, in, into this particular you know field, uh, they they will think that okay, it's it's not that uh, tough, you know. Uh, it's just simple thing only. No, just extract the image and see what's written. So uh, you can say that uh, verbally, it's very simple. But uh, but letting your you know, but uh, providing a heuristic or providing a reasoning to uh, to the computer to detect all these characters, which can be in different different alignments and different different sizes. So it's pretty hard. But it's not pretty hard. It's 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 kind of impossible until 2006 or 2007. When uh, you know people came up with something called uh, neural networks and things like that, so uh, till then op optical character recognition was there, but you know the accuracies and things were not that much good. So uh, so yeah, that's that's uh, with uh, optical character recognition. Here you can see that there 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 definitely are some reasoning and uh, you know understanding of the content of the image. So it's a computer vision task, right? Uh, then there is there comes machine inspection. Let's just say that I have a picture of uh, some normal machineries. And then I, 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 have, I have to detect uh, you know, defects, visual defects in the machinery. So uh, there comes machine inspection. So it also needs to understand the content, you know, reason about the content in the image, because uh, the, the, the particular system that is able to do this should you know, be able to even understand that this is particularly a normal system, and this is particularly a defective system, and these parts are defective. Right? So that's how that's another computer vision task. Then there comes retail. So you have already seen a lot of. Uh, you know, uh, news and things like that, articles, those people who are like following these kind of things. Even though you are not working, uh, I suggest that you all must, you know, have a little bit of uh, knowledge on what's going on around the world, right? So uh, recently that Amazon came in with something 
all the Amazon, like they were automating the Amazon warehouse, and then some people from the research field came came in with an automated checkouts. So through the CCTV, you can even say that uh, if a at all a particular person is standing, you can even recognize what he's actually doing. He or she is actually doing like uh, picking up something from the you can say uh, uh, from the shelf or even opening it and even even eating or drinking it and then uh, taking it out and automatically it gets checked out. So things like that. Again, so you can see how complex things are getting, right? How complex uh, these things are getting. Uh, so and then then comes three D model building. So it's 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 nothing but given a two D image. Let's just say two D image of a chair. I want to render it into a game or something, or or for AR or VR purposes. If I need a three D mesh, you know, or something like that. So um, then comes three D model building. Then medical imaging definitely. Uh, recently, you you would have heard that uh, you know neural networks or artificial intelligence. Is able to detect, uh, you know, coronavirus you know, conditions more faster than a typical doctor. So uh, that's all comes to medical imaging part. You know, you have MRIs and CT scans of lungs and things like that. So you just have to detect coronavirus in that. So uh, that comes again to medical imaging, and then, then there is automated safety. So you can think of multiple examples in automated safety, right? Then there is a match move like merging CG, either the green screen and things like that. And then there is motion capture, then uh, surveillance. Surveillance is a very, you know, you can say uh, a very active part of research in uh, computer vision. Surveillance is very much necessary. Uh, I have worked some uh, in some uh, paper as well in surveillance, so I will be showing some examples as well. So let's just say that there is a system that needs to detect your face, or you can say recognize your face, even with, with, even in the absence of your face. So that typically, uh, you know, uh, uh, you will feel like it's typically impossible. Because uh, if, if at all I'm not showing my face, then how can you even recognize me? So let's just simply say that uh, I, I showed my face in some previous time. And let's just say that I came into a room and uh, I just looked into the camera or or, or, or I uh, forgot to hide my face, let's just say. Then after after five or ten minutes, I uh, put on a helmet and I started doing wrong things, let's just say. So, uh, so typical systems that can actually, you know, uh, uh, keep track of this particular person, uh, this was the particular person who actually did all these things. So that these kind of things comes into surveillance. So there are some recent works in surveillance that is that we've been doing. Like people are uh, so in, into so much work that if at all you are wielding a gun, or uh, you are you are starting a fight, then the camera can or the CCTV camera can you know detect that by itself. There's no need for anything, uh, any any human intervention. So that is that is what in a surveillance system. Then there comes fingerprint recognition and biometrics. So now you'll ask uh, where come this. Computer vision, how how come some computer vision is coming into this fingerprint recognition? So if you if you if you, if you, you know um, a typical fingerprint recognition or biometric systems so like a, within your phone, uh, some people have uh, uh, an inbuilt fingerprint sensor in their phone. That is something different. And then then some someone has uh, in display fingerprint sensors. So in the in display fingerprint sensors, basically in one plus or things like that, they they actually capture a picture of your. So it's 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 with contact. You can say. Uh, Contact fingerprint recognition, or, and then there is contactless fingerprint recognition. So both of these are like uh, from a given picture of your thumbprint or your palm, you have to detect uh, or recognize this particular person, just like the face recognition. So, uh, so these are what uh, some you can say some uh, major uh, goals and major uh, industries where basically computer vision has been, uh, you know, doing some uh, good works. But uh, but as as you know, as as, as a very uh, beginner or 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 even at an intermediate level, you won't be coming, you know, come across these kind of uh, chronic, you can say, terms. You you won't be coming across like uh, if at all you Google something related to computer vision, you won't come across these kind of terms like OCR and things like that. So uh, some of the more simple computer vision tasks, or you can say some terms that you are you're going to frequently, uh, you know, notice and uh, in 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 while you are uh, journey through this computer vision task, it's basically object these kind of. Uh, these uh, broad categories you can simply say object classification, then there comes object identification, and there comes object verification, and comes object detection, and object landmark detection, of the segmentation, object These, these, these words, I can say these terminologies are what basically you're going to come across while uh, you are starting with this computer vision. So, what this basically is, let's just say that given an image, so we are talking about computer vision systems, and for computer vision systems, they need an input which is of which is of the form. Of an image, of a digital image, right? So uh, whenever I'm uh, talking about input, so you just have to like fill in in your brain that I'm talking about a digital image input. So that's it, like. Right? So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Right? So uh, object classification. So uh, let's just say that given an image, given an image, I just want to know what broader category 
of this object is present in this photogram. Let's just say I'm showing a picture of a uh, dog. So uh, you, uh, your system, your system, whatever system you have made, your system should be capable of telling that this particular image has a dog, right? Or this particular image is of a dog, right? Then there comes object uh, uh, identification. Then comes which is which type of a given object is in this photograph, right? Then comes object verification, which is is the object in the photograph. Like just saying, um, uh, I'm showing a picture of a dog, and it's like. Uh, whether this particular image is a dog or something like that. So object verification, object classification, and uh, you know the difference between both of these is a thin line, and uh, this this becomes more evident when we are talking about facial recognition systems, right? And then there comes object detection. It is it is it is a very very important. You can say uh, very active, you can say in a high level active research uh, object detection. Basically, what it is is let's just say that uh, given an image of a dog, your system is able to say this is dog, and this is the particular location where this dog is. Given the image, right? So that comes under object detection, where you're actually uh, kind of uh, segmenting out, or you can say localizing out your particular target cell. So then comes object landmark detection. So today in this workshop, we will be using an object landmark detection, which is nothing but the face landmark detections, and we'll be even uh, you know looking into uh, face detection as well. So. Uh, that is what object landmark is. So object landmark detection is basically, let's just say that uh, given an image of a face, I want to know where the eyes are, like right? this eyes where where it exactly is. So uh, so I can I, I can use some uh, image processing techniques as well just to get to know that where these eyes are. But but uh, so you know uh, the heuristics that I'm going to provide or, or the methodologies that I'm going to provide will be very complex in itself because there are multiple faces in the world in multiple. Lighting conditions in multiple orientations, so uh, it doesn't make sense that uh, there is there is uh, I, I I write my own you can say uh, laws or rules so that all of these variations are you know accounted for. So uh, so object this uh, particular thing, which is object landmark detection, is basically given an image of a face. Let's just say I'm asking that uh, I want to know the location of the nose or eye the eyes. So my system is able to you know point out the location of the eyes. So these are landmarks, basically the location of the eyes, or you can say the location of the chin, or these kind of things. Or, or if at all, I'm uh, I want to detect the pose of a person. Let's just say that I'm uh, there's a full body picture is given to a system, right? I'm just standing like that, and and I want my system to detect my shoulder points or my shoulders, where exactly my shoulders are, where exactly my palms are. So so it's going to point out that yeah, this this is in in the image, this is the particular point where, you know, I have my shoulders or palms like that. So uh, that is what landmark is basically in uh, computation. So uh, object landmark detection is basically nothing but you know detecting these landmarks. And then there comes object segmentation. So uh, that is basically pixel-wise object detection. You can kind of say. So uh, we will see an image that that will make things clearer for here. And then then comes object recognition. So uh, again, object classification, object identification, object recognition. You know, um, all these three terms might uh, look like same. Like after reading this, oh, it's similar. It's similar. It's very similar. It's actually very similar. But uh, uh, once we come into you know face recognition, face verification, and face classification, so uh, at that point you will get that uh, you know uh, the differentiating factor that basically all these three terms are divided into, right? So uh, this is this is the more simpler or you can say more abstract terms that you want to come across. So this is the picture that I was talking about. So uh, segmentation is basically as you can see that given a picture of you can say something like this. So this, given a picture of a cat like this, uh, I want to, I want to detect which all pixels belongs to the cat, and the uh, the grass and the trees and then the sky. So that is what uh, semantic segmentation is all about. So just, just for, for this now, just simply say segmentation. Just simply just simply say segmentation. Semantic is a beautiful uh, word. So just just, uh, just ignore that just for now, and just simply say that it's segmentation. So here you can see that the system is capable of identifying the grass pixels. Then you can see the cat pixels, and you can here say the tree pixels. And then the sky pixels, right? So, uh, so this is semantic segmentation, or you can say, uh, simply write down for, for now. You can say segmentation, and then there comes classification, which is exactly again given this this not this box. This box is due to the localization. So, uh, just ignore for that. Just ignore this particular box right now. This given this image of a cat, my system is able to even say that this particular image belongs to a cat, right? So once this is basically classification, and once I want to localize it, localize it. Means you can say that uh, given all other contents in the image, I just want to focus on this cat, or I want my system to detect this particular cat or where this particular cat is. So it, it so uh, one way to even uh, say that is just draw a bounding box or a box around that particular 
target of interest or you can say uh, object of interest so uh, this particular system is able to you know uh, make a block box around this cat particularly right this is localization yeah? and then there comes object detection so basically uh, when given an image there are multiple you can say class of objects and all of these class of objects are uh, you know differentiated so uh, this is object detection again you can see that there are two dogs and one cat so it's able to you know segment out all these different categories you know even able to detect where this particular image is then comes instant segmentation it's you can say that object detection and semantic segmentation like the combination of both of these so those people who are you know uh, very uh, new to this particular say that i have seen a lot of people say yeah, i don't, i i am hearing open cv for the first time so for, the, for them this won't make much sense i know uh, but uh, you know uh, before starting anything i just want to give an introductory feel to how things are so those people will be like ah just tell us what you're going to make today right uh, so because you are not interested in these kind of uh, you know high level things so uh, so today we will be trying to you know make a big mouth snapshot filter so i hope you all are you know this is a funny image so um, you all are very aware of this particular feature so it's nothing but just uh, it just uh, you know enlarges your lips and uh, like teeth and all like so we'll be trying to uh, mimic this uh, using uh, python and we will try to make something similar to this that will be doing and along with uh, you know writing the code i will i will i will share and uh, i will i will even uh, you know explain how things are from the beginning like things starts and things you know from the very beginning i will start to explain that how images are loaded and uh, what are images in the first place right we haven't uh, had the discussion yet so we will be doing that as well uh, along with some feature you can say feature detection methodology that i will i will just give you a little introduction to how feature extraction things works and pattern recognition things that, that works so uh just to get ready so we will directly jump into our code along with the discussion right uh, so yeah uh so uh directly jumping into code before directly jumping into code i just want to give an introductory feel into how images are so basically uh you all will be aware of you know pixels about pixels what pixels are you can say that uh, like atoms are for a you can say for a, a big compound it is like that pixels are like a combination of pixels basically makes an image right so uh, i what exactly a pixel is you can say a smallest unit that you can call uh, within an image right so uh, there are basically three types of pixels there are multiple uh, you can say channels so right now we will be just talking about three you can say three channels of pixels or three colors of pixels so you know that there are from some primary colors which are rgb the combination of this uh, red then green then blue makes out all the colors in the world right so uh, so typically it's this particular case is also you know mimicked in the photograph itself uh, so a, a typical image has three channels basically three channels means some value some some set of pixels that belongs to red category or that that says how much red it is in a, a particular region and then uh, the green category then the, the those pixel value says how many how much green is there in the image then there there comes the blue so how much blue is there so once you combine all these you get a new color so uh, basically how an image looks like let's just say i'm looking at an image of a person or a port portrait of a person let's just simply say this portrait of a person then uh, so this particular portrait of a person is basically nothing but three you can say three pages you simply say three pages are you know kept after one after another like stacked in you can say uh, in a horizontal way and such that this particular page belongs to r this particular page belongs to g and this particular belongs to p what this particular page itself is a set of you can say grids a lot of grids like these a lot of grids there is and each of these grids has a value between 0 and 255 Right, zero means the component, or you can say uh, for this particular R R page, we'll just we'll just call R page for this R, this particular pixel or this particular location, or you can say this particular grid has zero value. It just simply means that the, the the amount of red color I have in this particular grid box is zero. And if I have two fifty five, it just means that the amount of red color is the maximum I can have for any value. Right, two fifty five is the maximum range. or you can say the maximum value that i can have within a pixel for any color right and uh, similarly for green and blue then so uh, once i you know stack all these pages together i get uh, something like this from the top view like from the top view i get something like this 
and given each grid you can say given each grid i have three values right one is uh, red and one is green and one is blue one for red one for green one for blue and combining these together will get me a new color so this is how typically a digital image is uh, you know uh, stored and manipulated so uh, we will be, we will be also looking into uh, you know using these kind of informations so those people who are very new to computer vision or image processing this is what typically an image looks like so uh, so given an image if i if at all this particular image of a person so in the in the left corner there there will be a pixel like if i zoom in a lot you can see that there is a particular pixel there and within that particular pixel there are some values how many values three values and each value belongs to some red some green some blue and uh, combining those gives you the color that you are actually seeing right so uh, some uh, some uh, you can say some uh, some combinations that are very known is 255 255 255 so basically uh, the maximum amount of red i have i can have maximum amount of green i, I can have maximum amount of blue i can have so typically uh, so right now you might have guessed uh, rgb like all 255 255 is white like all colors in equal components so it goes with white so if i need a black pixel then everything will be zero right so if i if i need a red pixel let's just say uh, my image is a red red pixel red dot so it will be something like this if i need a, a green dot it will be something like it will be something like uh, this so i hope you are getting the intuition i just uh, i will just open up the chat itself so that uh, yeah so uh, yeah atul is here hi man atul so uh, so this is what uh, typically an image is basically in you can say uh, a digital image basically looks like right so uh, here we we need to do something uh, called uh, the, the the big mouth snapchat filter right so we will be discussing what all uh, things we need to do and then we will uh, one by one go into the code of doing this right so uh, for now let's just say that i have an image of a face right i have an image of a face i might not do something that good just assume that this is the face man you know right there is an eyes and then there is a lips and then there is a nose right so in this particular image what i want to do is i want to basically enlarge this particular region enlarge this particular region only right i have to enlarge this particular region only and so that this particular lip gets bigger and everything everything else remains same right so uh, you might have already guessed that uh, doing this is has a basic challenge itself that uh, how to detect this particular region like how to i even detect this particular region to so given an image like this that you are seeing right now if i tell you if i tell you that okay put a uh, big mouse snapchat filter over this particular video that is coming to you like the stream that you are coming to you. so uh, you will be thinking okay uh, the basic challenge is detecting this particular area right this is this is the basic challenge that you going to you're going to face and then once i have this basic you know region then i can simply use image processing as i said by creating another image from this image by enlarging it so i will just enlarge this particular section and i'll just copy it back to the image and i have my touch of and, and and as each frame i'm doing that it becomes a filter in itself or you can say it becomes a video in itself so uh, just uh, giving an introduction to video as well so this was basically an image here an image basically static image so uh, a video is nothing but uh, a stream of images a video is nothing but a stream of images so given a video if you just say that um, uh, given a, given a video of 2 seconds i can actually look for all the images that is that the stream of images basically what is happening in a video it is showing some uh, continuous stream or you can say continuous flow of images so that is what video is exactly right so my camera is basically taking a lot of pictures of my me exactly like a lot of pictures and uh, those lot of pictures are rendered back to you so that becomes a video right so uh, the lot of pictures the number of lot of pictures is actually the frequency at which the camera can pick basically uh, my pictures per second so uh, that is what fps they say like how many frames frames means how many pictures i have per second so uh, that's what frame per second is and and and, 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 I'm, and i'm pretty sure that everybody watching right now they they, they definitely you know uh, have heard of fps and i have felt like those people who are into gaming they will be saying oh yeah i'm getting 60 fps only much uh, i'm i'm going to you know raise my fps to 120 or something like that so you definitely have talked about fps and uh, this is what exactly fps is basically how many pictures you can put in a particular you can say second so the more pictures you have the more smooth will be the video so let's just say that there are only uh, 
10, 10 frames per second, then you will be seeing my streams like, like something like that because uh, the information's in the, you know, yeah, the information in the, you can say, uh, in between, you know, the time frames are lost because I, the camera is clicking something and I, I was like something thinking like that. And the next time my camera is clicking something and I'm like something like this. So uh, you can say, hey, okay, okay, it's just as like going like that. So the, the, the more FPS or the, the more powerful your camera is in uh, opening up and closing up and opening up and closing up, basically that's uh, what FPS defines. So uh, so basically a video, when we are talking about video, it's nothing but a set of, you know, images only, right? So uh, similarly, so given here, the, let's, just, let's just focus on the fact that given an only single image, I want to do that big mouth filter means uh, given an image, I just want to enlarge that image. Then we will, then we will, you know, extend that discussion towards videos. So I hope you all are not getting confused because I know that right now you might be feeling like, okay, okay, what is happening? Okay, okay. okay. So I just want you guys to be be there, like uh, just focus, or I, I would say that uh, just believe uh, we're definitely gonna reach the end with some new knowledge because right now the the you know the time frame is very less and uh, we need to cover a lot of things. So uh, there is there is this, this is the only way that I have to directly jump into things rather than just you know like uh, beating around the bush and then getting in. That is the actual the uh, that's that is actually the way to teach things. But uh, you know, time constraints. So yeah. So the the basic challenge that we were discussing that given an image, I need to find this region of interest, or you can say ROI. Like ROI is stands for region of interest basically. So uh, uh, this ROI basically uh, is what I am first of all needed. So with, without this ROI, uh, I can't move further, right? So uh, detecting this uh, ROI has multiple ways, you know. But uh, we will be using something called as uh, facial landmarks. So uh, before all that, before all that. I will, I, will, I, will, I will explain you what exactly pattern recognition or whatever we have seen so far, like the object detection or the object classification or things like that. We have seen a lot of things there, right? And we have seen things working. Like we have seen uh, even systems fully fledged working on things like that. So it, it just simply means that uh, we already have uh, uh, things like that in real world, right? So how how what is the basic principle into pattern recognition and things? And it's it's it's. It's very, you know, it's it's not that complicated. It's very intuitive, but a lot of people miss this point about this intuitive nature of pattern business. Let's just focus on the fact that we have just four pixels. Let's just say I have a image two cross two. Two cross two means I have two pixels in this way and I have two pixels in this way. Basically, it's row versus column. Like any matrix, it's row and column, right? Two this way and two this way. But we will we will later later on see that why I just said uh, two in this way, two in this way. Like this, we will, we will see that. So basically, let's just say that I have two rows and two columns. So basically, my image something looks like this. So basically, two cross two means I have two pixels on uh, rows and uh, two pixels in columns. So basically, making up four pixels in total, right? So let's just say that I have an image like this. So I need to recognize, uh, or you can say, my system must know that uh, some, uh, you know, differentiate between some uh, pixels. Or you can say some images given this uh, four pixels. So what I mean to say is, and 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 uh, once again, let's just say that this is a single channeled image. Remember, uh, as I'm using new you know terminologies, this is due to the fact that when you are you know going over after this workshop, you will be going over to the Google just to see things, and they they won't be saying pages or they won't be calling things pages because we just call pages to, for simplicity. So what we, what we call here as pages is basically nothing but channels, channels in image, right? So here, uh, here, we, here we have a single channel image. Single channel means uh, right now just have to focus that it just simply says black or white. Right? Black means uh, do I have to you know show black or do I have to show white? There is no information on anything uh, indeed in there. So uh, let's just get our black pen here. So it's it's a simple image. So it can in this in this particular way it can either be two fifty five or or zero. So or or, or or let's say just make it simple. We will say uh, it's one for white color like on on. Like the pixel, like particular screen, or you can see the LED that is in that particular place is uh, glowing, means one, and uh, zero for off, like black, right? So uh, this particular pixel can have one or zero, like either it can have one or it can have zero as a value. So the single channel image uh, is there, and uh, what all you can say, what all, how many permutations I have? Uh, yeah, monochrome exactly. In fact, uh, you can say that monochrome, uh, grayscale images they say, but uh, I don't want to use uh, much of the, you know, terms like that. So just simply say uh, we have a single channel image, right? So uh, here we have, uh, as I said, that how many 
types of, or you can say how many images can I have given this particular set of uh, information that if I provide you this information that I have two cross two of uh, image and each pixel can have one or zero. So how many images can I obtain using this particular setting? So it's simply that I have four pixels, right? And each four pixel can take two values, either zero or one. So to the power four, if I'm not wrong, right? I guess uh, you all agree with me, right? So, uh, so simply nothing but uh, here we can have zero or one, and here we can have zero or one, or here we can have zero or one, here we can have zero or one. To the four, to the four, sixteen. So sixteen different images I can have in this permutation, right? Let's say. So uh, let's just say that uh, I want to detect a pattern. Pattern is nothing but you can say spatial arrangement of pixels. Basically, if I tell you that I have a three cross three grid like this. And I have black here, and I have black here, and I have black here, and I have black here. This is a, this is a pattern itself, or I can say I have black here, so like this. So this is a plus pattern, or it's just a pattern in itself. So nothing pattern is nothing but as you know, as in pattern itself. More into more, uh, you can say dive into more abstract way, or 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 more smaller way, or just zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. So at, at a very abstract level, something like this is a pattern. Or you can say in this particular four pixel, if I say this is only that is black, then this is also itself a pattern, like something like this, right? It's itself a pattern itself. So let's just say that I have to detect patterns in an image. I just say I want to detect patterns such that in given this image, I need to detect this kind of pattern, like an X kind of pattern. So how do I come up with something like this? So uh, the basic idea of pattern recognition is you can simply say, uh, given this like something like image, and you know there are some values in between one and something like this. So uh, what I do is, uh, if I say, see, I, I want to make some decisions, right? My my system need to make some decisions. So uh, given something like this, let's just say uh, my system should say if if this particular pixel is black, you know this particular pixel is black, and all these pixels are white. If this is the pattern that my system need to recognize out of the sixteen possible images out there. So uh, my system should, uh, you know, react to this particular image, and it, it must tell me that okay, this particular image is what we are looking for, right? So in that case, uh, I will need to, you know, put on some rules or give 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 my, uh, you can say my uh, computer system or the or the system or or the or the or model or whatever it is, uh, some rules that this is some rules for which uh, you will, uh, you know, react to. So these rules are, you can say, given the sixteen. A uh, small amount of you can say uh, the small amount of real world that I have here. The 16 images, right? 16 possibilities. So this 16 possibility, given the 16 possibility, possibility, it might be very easy for me to do the if else case. I simply say that doing the if else case would work in this way, right? But as I am increasing the uh, you know the amount of pixels, because a typical image that you are actually seeing has around uh, you know uh, uh, you can say a resolution of maybe 1960. Cross uh, 1280, so or 1280 cross 720, or things like things like that, like, like to that extent, right? Uh, so, uh, so that would be much make sense. So uh, we need some more uh, mathematical way of approach, not just the if else case, right? So, uh, so uh, uh, before discussing about this four pixel case, let's just you know scale down this uh, to another half level. Let's just say I have just two pixels, and I have to detect whether this particular right hand side pixel is off or not. For that, what will I do? Just a simple assumption is: see, here we can have zero or one, right? So the pattern I'm looking for is one zero, right? What I say, I just say that uh, I will I will multiply whatever this value is with uh, some uh, some uh, let's say some uh, random value. Let's just say three, or let's just say w one. W one can be any integer number, right? And then I say uh, here we have w two, right? So now what happens? Given a two to uh, two pixel image, given a two pixel image, what will I try to do is I will calculate w1 into what I have here, whatever value I have here. Let's just call it x1, and plus w2 into whatever value I have in this value. And let's just call it x2. And uh, this, this, and if this particular value comes out to be three, right? If if this particular value comes out to be three, then I just said that I found my this particular pattern, or three in the sense, or you can say w1. In this case, w1. Basically, what I did is uh, I I, I uh, multiplied w1 with whatever values here I can have, then w2 with whatever values in here I can have. So the case where I am looking for, like the pattern that I looked for, came into you know existence 
it is nothing but when i calculate calculate this particular expression which is w1 into water value as i have and then plus w2 into water value have i have in the second pixel so that the, the particular you know that the sum and all these uh, computations should result in something like w1 basically if that happens it simply means that x1 was uh, uh you can say 1 and this was 0 so that's exactly what i was looking for right so i hope this is pretty much clear to how uh, a, a two pixel image can be recognized right so now comes more complex cases if it is if it is three pixel and you know if it's three pixel and i want to detect something like this or i want to detect something like uh, you can say this and uh, so now you will see that uh, these simple heuristics or these simple heuristics definitely build this particular you can say uh, small problems but uh, as as it scales bigger uh, you won't be able to define by it, uh, these relations by your own right you won't be able to define all these relations because uh, if at all in this case you are getting w1 and if i if i if i make this you know pattern a little bit more complex then there will be multiple patterns remember if i make this a little bit complex in its sense like in the, in the input image or you can say the number of uh, pixels we are talking about so uh, as as i increase or as i make it complex or or the, or the pattern i'm looking for i make it complex then this particular relation that results in a unique value for my particular pattern will be more complicated right so even the, in this case you can see even in this case detecting this particular exact pattern will result in some uh, more complex uh, relations not just a simple multiplication and things like that or if at all there is some multiplication and things like that i need to find uh, what all w's make up this particular computation unique so unique in the sense that uh, let's just say that uh, right now we just saw that uh, this uh, when uh, this particular expression to you know get into w1 is the only uh, is only possible when x1 is 1 and x2 is 0 right but as you as you uh, make it more complex in its uh, you know the image or some things like that then uh, this particular relation you know this particular value to come up to w1 will be multiple values will come up to w1 because your whatever you have ruled or whatever rule you have just actually provided or whatever these computation simple computations you have provided these computations are uh, you can say uh, less complex or very simple uh, that uh, multiple values actually result in what i am looking for so basically uh, w1 comes in different different patterns and uh, my system will say okay here this third pat pattern is but exactly that pattern is not there right so this is the basic analogy of pattern recognition or, or a simple way of how pattern recognition basically works so uh, now multiple ways there are in which uh, these computations can be done this 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 particular computations can be done but uh, you you know that the, the 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 you can say the 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 state of the art for computer vision is cnns or computer uh, you can say convolutional neural networks and uh, those people who are aware of convolutional neural networks they will know that see once i wrote this equation here they'll be thinking that okay we have seen this somewhere else or somewhere i have seen this so uh, this is basically what convolutional neural networks or things like that actually does so what uh, convolutional neural network has you know uh, the power power of convolutional neural networks is let's just assume that there is some uh, mag uh, you can say magical way in which i can you know uh, find this w1 and w2 according to the pattern or according to the thing that i want to learn so simply say that so simply say that uh, given a pattern i can actually learn this w1 and w2 uh you without any information without any prior information about what this w1 and w2 can be that will be magical right such that or you can say such that uh uh given that pattern uh, uh you you get that particular value or you can say that uh, this particular w1 and w2 is set in such a way that uh, only your pattern results in this particular w1 case let's like just say right so uh that is basically what an analog to these convolutional neural network things is basically so this uh, w1 and w2 so w1 and w2 are basically these kind of things right uh so uh this is what a basic analog to pattern recognition is and then there comes more abstract to what recognition and things like that so this was uh detecting patterns in an image so now wh what to do with these patterns like wh wh i go i just got that okay i got a plus pattern now what man uh okay plus pattern is done and everything is done uh see computer vision is not about ml or dl basically uh, computer vision is basically another field you can simply say uh, the ml and dls are you can say uh, ways to which uh, computer vision has its power so simply like that right you can you can basically uh, do uh, ml algorithms for exploiting or or making systems for computer vision 
So uh, uh, Pardas uh, actually has said that at deep learning. So it's not like that. Uh, computer vision is not only about CNN. That's what I want to, you know, uh, it's a misconception like people have that a CNN is all about, you can say CNN is the only thing. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, CNN is the only thing out there that is computer vision. But that is very much wrong because uh, CNN or any deep learning, deep learning is something different. They have a set of algorithms for uh, optimizations and things like that. Right, so we we exploit, or even you say the CNN like to those people. Uh, this is these terms I'm going to say. These these for only those people who are actually into field or I have some uh, you know doubts regarding this. Deep learning is uh, exactly it can be also implemented using so machine learning, deep learning. You can say that uh, the way of you know uh, making these general rules, the way of making these general rules. But how come I came into these general rules? Or, 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 or you can say that in CNNs, you are putting in on filters, right? So where did that filters came from? How did it even start it? Basically, what is deep learning doing? With deep learning is less just you know optimizing that filters. That's, that's all deep learning is doing. But uh, where, where, where did uh, somebody just came up with uh, you know this particular filters, like TV Rama, Ra, Ra, Raman, like, he was like sleeping and he says like, uh, he just dreamed of things like that, like dreamt of things like that. So. Uh, uh, but for taking the full advantage, you can also use. We can use any algo. Exactly, you can even make your own. There are um, multiple. You, you can own. So that that's what exactly what I was uh, going to discuss. So uh, just simply recognizing patterns are not just about uh, you know computer vision. This is the basic analog to what computer vision starts from. Like, but what to do with these patterns? Exactly, right? What to do with these patterns? That is a major question. So uh, let's just say let's let, let's for let's for a sense. Let's just say that I want to detect. Uh, uh, a, B, C, D. Let's just say that my system need to detect A, B, C, and D. So given an image of any or any of these four characters, my system should be able to differentiate between A, B, C, and D. Fine. So uh, prefer DL. Uh, that's what my intuition is. See, uh, most people prefer DL. It's due to the fact that uh, this particular CNN exists there. That's 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 the reason because. Uh, uh, 90% of the tasks are very complex, and the complex tasks are definitely went to DL. That's why. That's why. Because you can't, you can't, you can't put on your own heuristics or uh, you can say rules in DL, right? Uh, that is, that is actually a black box kind of thing. Like it, it does things by on its own. You don't need to reason for things. You just have to provide. Okay, this is the uh, input, and this is the typical output. So, uh, so yeah. So uh, the, we were talking about that uh, DL and things like that. So that's why. But 90% of the task, uh, you know, doesn't need things like this. Some heuristics will work. So that's what. So again, that's what we were talking about. So, so A, B, C, and D is what I am uh, supposed to, you know, uh, detect given this particular, you can say, uh, setup. So I know how to detect small patterns. I just know that uh, I how to detect patterns like plus or or dashes or curves, or how how do I detect even a curve? Just just increase. The number of pixels we were talking about in this case, like it's four, two close to uh, four pixels, right? So I just increase that particular, you know, image. So uh, this will be a lot of pixels here. You can just simply say, and a curve will typically be something like this, right? Right. So uh, so uh, the same analog is again there. We need to find some different ways such that this particular is, uh, you know, uh, uh, pattern is separated out from all other possible patterns. That is what the challenge is in pattern recognition, right? So now comes uh, what to do with these patterns, right? So uh, so let's just say we, we took a took a took a you know simple uh, use or you can say simple case where uh, we have to detect A B C D these characters. So let's just okay this and go for capital letters. So what will happen is uh, just simply say that this A particularly when we are focusing on this A, this A is basically made of some smaller smaller patterns. If you see that I have a diagonal line like this. Then I have a diagonal line like this, like a negative slope, then positive slope. Then I have a, line, a horizontal line like this. So, like, if 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 at all, I'm looking at a broader picture, like big picture that makes some sense to humans. Are basically small, 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 small patterns arranged in such a way that it 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 uh, at the end it comes up like something meaningful to us, right? So, what I'm going to do with this pattern recognition, well, I think, what I'm going to do with this pattern recognition. So, what I'm going to do is. If at all I can I can I can detect these these simple simple patterns. Let's just say that if at all I can detect a positive slope line, right? So I made I made a simple uh, you can say pattern recognition system that will tell me whether this particular image has a positive slope line. So it it told me yes it has, and then I say that okay there is a negative slope line, right? Then the system says yes yes there is. 
and then there is a horizontal system line so it also said horizontal let's just say i don't mind my uh, handwriting i hope you are getting this so uh, then there is an horizontal line right uh, it also say yes so i can make uh, a rule on myself uh, by myself that okay if all three of these uh, features are there then it's definitely be a or it's probably be a right so now comes b so uh, b is there so the, the, then then i say that b is basically two curves similar curves with a horizontal line then there comes c it's nothing but a simple curve then there comes d a curve with a a a, sing, a, a, a vertical line right so uh, so these patterns can be combined in such a way that makes complex structures or you can say complex images so to so to identify these complex images i need to break down things into small 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 parts so again now comes that uh, even this given given this simple a just the simple analogy of an a you can simply say that uh, we have you see we haven't taken into account the, the the way a can be written some people write a like this some people write a like this or some people uh, write a like this so we haven't like see, when we are actually talking about these kind of things you understand that how powerful your brain is and you are just simply using it to sleep so sad <laughs> so uh, there are uh, no offense buddy so uh, so what are you talking about uh, yeah so uh, a single system that in this way I, i if at all i want to detect a then i i, I you know defined a system like this that uh, has three pattern recognition systems and it will detect uh, say yes or no if that particular pattern exists and then after that all those values i will combine together and they say okay this a right so in this particular case i have only taken one case what an a something looks like this right so for a a so to detect like something like this then my heuristic or my rules will change so this will thing get more complex and more complex and more complex or just simply assume that this is just a case when there is a white background and a black a let's just imagine the scale of difficulty we have when detecting a cat out of a normal uh, you can say uh, scene see so that is to another impossible level like so to an impossible level so uh, so uh, that time like when this all started in 1942 or 1950 like people were so confused that they they thought okay uh, uh, this is never going to happen like a system can never do something like this right so uh, then 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 this uh, as as uh, you know uh, parha and all the uh, people idiom and people were saying that uh, dl and ml so these dl and ml things makes the reasoning part or you can say this rule building part simpler so in ml in ml basically in ml what you are doing is you, you you provide some intuition towards how features should be uh, looking like so features again as a new term features features is nothing but these things i just here said that right positive slope line or negative slope line or horizontal line so these are features of this particular image right so this particular feature so uh, so uh, these you know human made features like human paid features so that term is uh, more concrete in ml basically ml is a big subset and within that we have a subset called dl so it's something like this so uh, we have ml then we have representation learning then within that we have dl so uh, so don't go into that uh, just just uh, forget that just i just told it for those who are who know a little bit of the things so ml is basically more into you know hand crafted features so like these kind of things like if i know that a particular tire something looks like this a tire has a lot of circles and it typically is a black in color or things like that so this is more on hand crafted features so if i hand craft features so rather than just providing the whole image just just assume that a system is there and rather than just providing the image i am actually providing some more information just but not not just the image so i am pro i am providing my system that okay this image has this many circles or this image has color black or this image has these kind of patterns like patterns that we have discussed so if if if, if with some some way i can actually provide the system that these pictures contain these kind of things then the only thing that my basically my system need to do is given these kind of sets what most possibly this particular thing can be right so that so so the, the the process where i am actually providing like i am actually providing the features is basically considered in ml right that 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 core thing is mo most most uh, you can say uh, fundamental ml algorithms works on that right so you can even provide images itself right but they won't work that much because uh, you know uh, the, that's why we have dl basically because because the spatial relation between images are not you know well known in ml methodology so just forget that some some new terms just forget that so uh, ml is basically uh, thing thing uh, that that is that that our our uh, human in, uh, you can say intervention in between just to you know 
um, uh, say that these kind of features exist. So DL, or, or you can say deep learning is basically, you, you provide the image itself. Now it's the model's you know, whole job to even extract the features as well. So now the model will do what? That I will tell, tell my model that, OK, see, this is the picture of a cat, OK? So now I don't know what you do. Just simply tell me whether this picture is a cat or not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take this, take this and take uh, around uh, two weeks of time. Go. I'm giving you uh, uh, 10 lakhs of images of different cats and those images that are not cats. Take it. Now, now let's, let's just do the job. Take as much time as you need. Right. So that is what DL basically does. So DL, what is does is DL has a target. Or you can say as a challenge, so which I have provided is okay, you can't do this, so you, you do this only. What is that? Detect the cat from the image. So I have, I have so that particular model has image with cat and image with no cat. So what is trying to do is given this particular ta task, it will try to extract features which I don't know what. Nobody knows what. It's just that particular DL only knows what kind of features to extract. So that the target is resolved. What is the target? Whether to detect cat in there or not. So given that 10 lakh images, there are a lot of images in cat. So what will my model do is it will it will randomly start uh, exactly. It's it's only training a model. I'm just not you know uh, in in online lectures or in videos you will have hear okay we are going to train the model. So what is train the model do? Like what is that happening only? It's nothing but whatever we have discussed that feature part and things like that. Like these things. These things are. You know, done by the model itself. Like it's 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 randomly. You know, starts with randomly looking into patterns, like a line and this and this and this, and it's just combine that, and then again some new patterns uh, arise. Then it's then it's again finds patterns of that. Then it combines that. Then at the end, it will look at look into that. Okay, uh, with these kind of patterns, am I able to you know uh, separate out this non-cat pictures with cat pictures? Am I able to do that? So given my large amount of images, which is data set, which is what's called data set, large amount of images with with uh, cats and without cats, it will detect that, OK, this particular feature does not work because um, a particular image says this is cat. And this particular uh, feature, extracting this particular feature actually tells us that this picture is cat, right? this model. So this model is fine. But another image, there is cat. But extracting that set of features is not working in this particular cat. So what it will try to do? It will try to do something with this, this as well. So at the end, given the 10 lakh images, you have such concrete set of features, like we discussed in this positive negative line and things like that, such concrete set of features that given any image in the world now, that is able to predict cat. Because it has seen so many different variants of cat. I hope this makes a little understanding as to how uh, you know, uh, things like this works. Right? I hope those people who are watching actually got a understanding on how basically this thing is. So uh, at, the, at, the, at the end, at the core, you can see at the core depth or at the very uh, fundamental uh, you know, uh, depth, what you are actually seeing is nothing but simple patterns, like two pixels. The two pixel analogy is the best to even remember things like this. So how to compute things or how to make this unique, that is done by algorithms and more advanced algorithms. And then there is Right? So, uh, so, uh, so yeah, so here we are directly into this discussion here. So now we will be uh, going into, uh, you know, our code. But uh, before that, uh, uh, we were like discussing about, you know, our facial recognition. Oh, this ROI I think. So uh, now you got an understanding that what I was talking about ROI. So given, so right, so, so previously we were talking about cats, or you can say A, A character or B character like that, like alphabet, right? But right now I, I am talking about lips. But right now, my cat is my lips. I need a system that basically gets me the lips, right? So uh, this is the intuition behind what uh, we will be using. We'll be using something more concrete than just the lips. So there is a thing known as uh, facial landmarks. So it's a standard as to what facial landmarks is, right? So there are a 68 type variant, and there is, I guess, a 194 type variant. What this basically is. Landmarks is, as I said, that if I want to detect eyes in an image, so two dots will be there in eyes. These are landmarks. Right? Similarly, 68 landmarks is basically given a face. I will try to make a good face this time. Something like this. OK, I failed miserably. Anyways, so, uh, so uh, OK, I'm getting there. A nice. Uh, right, so given a face. I need to find that so this is a chain, okay? You just have to, uh, you know, uh, be with me. Just, just assume this is a chain. So I need to detect like these landmarks, like where my chain is, right? 
these chins and then then their lips and there are some nose points then there is an eyes point right and then there is this uh, eyebrow point right so this is what basically so the total number of points i have to define my face is 68 or 194 194 is a more refined one so 68 is what we're going to use and uh, so, so this is 68 landmarks is basically what this is what we're going to use so this landmarks so there is a system just simply say that there is a system a computer vision model that basically given a face gets me this all thing all the landmarks and things like that so now you're going to ask me given a face given a face so uh, so the, the, right now the image you are seeing actually has face right but it is not just the image of face there is a lot of background there is a lot of t-shirt there is a lot of hairs definitely there is a lot of hairs like right? uh, you know corona thing uh, so, yeah uh, so uh, there is a lot of hairs then there is a lot of things right so then then the me so uh, it's not just a face man so uh, I, so the first step before this facial landmark is face again so again there is another system given an image like this like with lots of people and lots of um, noise and things like that that system is able to actually detect or localize the faces right so basically localize the faces how to localize faces the same way we discussed in the previous like we had the discussion about you know patterns and things like that so in faces it's more complex detecting faces is more complex like uh, you know eye shapes and noses and things like that but it's all does you know it, it, this find the features are extracted by the model itself or you can actually provide some intuitions so things like that so uh, given that system is basically about, about to you know detect this face and this face particularly this face i'm going to give it to my landmark detector that is detecting my landmarks i'm going to say okay okay dude uh, do one thing get me this landmark landmark of this face here is a face just get me the landmark right uh, it's uh, pretty simple there right so uh, so uh, that is the basic way of doing you no know, facial landmarks and uh, things like that so what once i have this facial landmark i have this particular you can say uh, set of dots that belongs to my lips right so once i have this particular dots so it will be similar something like this these dots will be something like this the outer dots will be something like this right the lips dots i can simply say that this could make something like this so this particular uh, after this particular dot what i am going to do is i just have to enlarge this just enlarge this dot right so enlarging this dot is again a little bit more complex how it's 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 you can only resize an image that is that is a you can say a parallelogram you can only resize an image that is a parallelogram right you 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 will never see an image like something like this without in in three channel format remember in three channel format so i uh, so, so the image is always defined in length into breadth length into width or you can say length into breadth width or height into width right height into width so uh, you you only make a resize an image into height into width and the width so resizing is itself a more different concept so we won't be discussing that but remember that resizing is also not just a simple way it it comes into see resizing comes in image processing not in computer vision because there is no need to understand what is inside no anything can be so it, it doesn't need to understand okay i am resizing a lips only no so this is the way i have to uh, resize so there is nothing like that a uh, image is there okay resize it okay i am resizing it that is what image processing image processing is too cool like my the image processing model if it all it's a person and computer vision is a person computer vision is a serious guy like a, a, a geeky guy you don't talk talk to him much but this uh, image processing guy is too too cool he doesn't care about what is given to him he will just do the things and okay okay take it it's like that right so we have that that image processing thing so once i have this particular you can say uh, boundary boundary dots what i'm going to do is i'm going to approximate or or i'm going to look for a rectangle that basically bounds this lips so once i have that rectangle i can actually crop out that lips right i can actually crop out that lips so once i crop out that lips i can enlarge that and i can paste it back simple as that right pasting exactly pasting cropping is what given this particular what is this this is a multi dimensional array right multi dimensional array or or you can say simply say a matrix or a table right now that never call a matrix a table that's very wrong but still let's just say that uh, nobody is going to you know see us so we will just do that that's cool and logic yeah that's good so uh, so given that what what we have here uh, we have this particular matrix only if i have to crop something out what i am basically doing i am just saying that after this row and after this column i don't need anything and before this row and before this column i need everything so what is exactly mean is after this row after this row and before this row 
I need all the things after this columns and before this columns. I need all the things. So I take this three by three separate out. So I have now new, a new separate image. This is the cropped version of that image that I had. Simple as that. So that is basically what I have to do. So first of all, we need something that can does our you know that can do our facial landmark wala thing and uh, face detector wala thing, right? We need something like that. And secondly, we need something that can do this array manipulation, like array wala thing. Right and 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 the major thing, like the, the most important thing is the image that you are seeing that you are seeing right now in images. Those all are just binary maps, or you can say binary images, or you can say binary values, or bit maps, or things like that. You can call whatever that you want. So they, those are binary values. So how do I convert that binary value into this uh, meaningful sense of things like this array? Right. So I need something that can actually do that as well. Right. Then I need something. That can you know resize this. So the resize is why is resizing you know just imagine why is resizing so important. So uh, resizing is basically given an image. Let's say given an image three cross three. I want to make this image ten cross ten. Right? Ah, uh, pretty simple. No, no, no. You will be thinking, oh, this is totally this is uh, this is like no. I have been doing this a lot. A simple function does this job, but you need to understand how many things there is in in, in behind. So just a overview of things. Just imagine that here I have nine pixels. Here I have 100 pixels, 91 pixels. Where do I get these 91 pixels? I only have nine pixels. No, where do I get these 91 pixels? And there comes the uh, concept of interpolation. So these, th this interpolation is a new word. A lot of you might have heard in mathematics. So exa exactly the same. Math is math is the thing that rules the world. If anybody says uh, you know otherwise, then it's okay because I'm I'm I'm, I'm okay with everyone. Okay, I don't know. So uh uh. This 91 values are basically that's necessary to create this 100 10 cross 10 or 100 pixel value, right? Where did I get? Where do I get from this 91 values? I'm going to extract that from nine. So how do I'm going to extract? That is what interpolation. Is. So just to give you an idea of what resizing basically is. So basically, here let's just say that I had an image of 36 cross uh, 50. This 36 cross 50 basically image has to be resized to double its size, right? Double its size. So into double size means 72 cross 100. So 72 cross double size means you can see that how many pixels have to be generated, newly generated pixels. And these newly generated pixels must, must make sense about the image. So now you'll think, OK, you only told, told us that resizing is nothing about the content of the image. Exactly. There is no need to understand the content of the image. There is a single rule only to interpolate things. You will understand when you will actually learn that. Right? So you read about it. So it's very interesting. So yeah, so uh, we have just have to resize this particular image and I have to paste it. That's it. Done. Done. So uh, now, now again comes. Is it actually done? No. So now just <laughs> I've taken an, another analogy. So this is exactly what I was talking about when we were starting. Like we have to learn a lot of things. I know that this might this this must be definitely like a lot of things to you know catch up at the same time. But uh, I I just want you people to be with me, right? Uh, because uh, it's it's very interesting. So uh, now what is basically I have to Crop it back to the picture. Now let's just imagine I have an image of a scenery. Assume this is a mountain. Okay. Here all and this is a river. Right? And this is the sun. And let's just say I have to put an airplane in this. Right. And I have an image of an air, airplane. Oh, this looks like a uh, shark, or maybe I don't know what. So uh, this particular Plane is there, and, and in the background, in the background, like in the, the background of this particular, uh, you can say, uh, this airplane is what blue color, right? And the background of this particular case is, let's say, yellow color. Okay. Background of this, uh, let's just say, green color. Oh, in my in my world, it's green color only. Okay, don't judge me. So now this green color and this blue color. So what I'm going to have to do is I just have to simply paste it over there. What is pasting means? Again, come down to our analogy of array, right? This is the reality. Let's just say that this three cross three is a new image that I want to do. I will just simply copy the content of the pixels, pixel by pixel, into the new image. And I have the new image in that particular case, right? As simple as that. That is what pasting is all about. It's itself doing that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to, I'm going to Take each pixel from this image. I'm going to paste it over there. And now, what happened is, given the background that is green color, I have a plane 
that has a box in there with what blue color and a plane inside but the behavior i wanted was just a plane no so now now what now, now this is all mess this is again comes to seamless cloning seamless seamless so this is this was basically started when we when we were talking about adobe photoshop remember that adobe photoshop people so they were they were they, they are super super cool people like super cool those people like invented something like this and i don't know maybe they haven't uh, you know uh, published a paper or something like that and then some people from i believe it's from microsoft research if i'm not wrong or facebook i don't know i, I guess it's microsoft so those people actually came up with this thing and you know uh, uh, actually publicized the research paper on this and then then all of the other uh, you know small small term software uh, you know industries actually started doing this basically seamless cloning is just to imagine that if at all in some way i can actually cut this basic uh, plane out of this like the, the boundary of this plane and then i have to paste it over here just exactly like i want it like right so something like that so that is what seamless cloning is so the same way i have to basically do this given this particular lips this this particular uh, uh, bad lips i have to just not only just simply copy the contents but i have to co copy the content in such a way that that there, there is no abnormality in the copy although although it's a it's a very radical abnormality that i have this much double the size of a lip but the, the abnormality is for us right so basically the abnormality is that the, you can't see that uh, you know square box or something like that that is what exactly what we mean so for that we uh, will be using seamless cloning that's a thing like seamless cloning seamless clone right seamless clone and there is another term so another term for you to you know check up on so seamless cloning we want to seamless cloning we will be talking about a little bit of mask so when we we'll, once we will be start doing the coding we will be saying mask right so uh, so we have like uh, two minutes before we start the coding so uh, if anybody is having any kind of doubt i hope everybody is aware of uh, you know uh, python itself so uh, that is that is all that we need right so yeah that's that's all we need and now now uh, given the python as i as i told you guys that seamless cloning or resizing is itself a very complex procedure so these kind of complex procedures either you can do it in from scratch right so you can do it from scratch and you can take around like um, uh, two weeks or or a week or maybe two three days depending upon how good you are Two three days uh, to uh, write all these things again. That is already available. So why to reinvent the wheel? Or if there is a wheel that is spare there, why to make one, man? Like you, you don't need to be a factory, right? You just have to take that spare and put it in, and you know enjoy the ride. So similarly, there is some uh, libraries that we use. All of you are engineers. You definitely have known libraries. No, not the libraries where you go for time pass. Not the college libraries. The libraries that we actually use in programming, right? So Python has us. as a huge set of libraries a, a, a top class you can say uh, developers are out there who are working for free so good so uh, those people are working for free like open source you can say so uh, so they are doing an amazing job like doing things they are making some people are making their own packages and things like that right so there are multiple packages like somebody has done the work somebody has produced the tires i just have to take it take this spare part and enjoy my ride like put it in my car and okay I'm, i'm ready to go so that is basically what open cv dlib or i will just write it down that is what open cv dlib and numpy like the three things that we basically want to do open cv basically does the job like it does a lot of job like a lot of job a lot of job means a lot of job you, you will take around 2 to 3 months to even consider or you can learn all the things that is being done in open cv then there comes the real world things that is out there right so it's, it's a whole, whole big field but we are just you know putting up little little steps there so this open cv basically is what this is a library there has a lot of stuff but we will be asking open cv okay buddy just read the images and get me this array type format like read the image and get me this array type format one thing secondly after this array type format i need to do that slicing and cropping and things like that right for that i have numpy why is python used more than r in machine learning answer is right there right the people are actually shifting to new languages but, uh, i don't think that's going to work the personal opinion right uh, here you can see my face just got deformed yeah so 
So we have what? So hey, you, you can actually see here, this rectangle is getting made, right? This is exactly what I was talking about. Given something, if I want to, you know, translate it, see, it's automatically directed that bounding box that uh, that is around this particular image. This is exactly what this similar kind of thing is exactly what you're going to do for this lips thing, right? So, uh, so NumPy is the thing that gets me this arrayvala manipulation, like this arrayvala thing, that multi-dimensional arrayvala thing. So that is for NumPy, and the facial landmarks and face detection is done by Dlib. We can actually do that in OpenCV as well, but uh, facial landmarks is always done in Dlib. That's why facial detection is also being done in Apanakya Dlib, right? So all three, all three, you know, modules are very important. You will definitely. See, NumPy is the thing that you will use definitely. Like, if at all you are you are anyone who is interested in doing anything that starts with data, like name starts with data only, then you're definitely going to use NumPy. Like, your first statement will be import NumPy as entry. Right? So, even if you're going to write hello world, you're going to import NumPy, that, that's sure. So, we have NumPy, then we have OpenCV, then we have data. Right? So, uh, so, now I don't think that you guys are seeing my what? PY file, right? So I will just shift over to my PY file. I guess the, my screen is, uh, you know, you can see my screen actually. Can you, you can see my screen. Like we will take a little, like a two minute break just to, just to, you know, just so that you guys can digest whatever we are just, you know, uh, went through. Just, just a little bit. We will just simply start with the coding because in the code, a lot of things would be like this that uh, this function does this. So you will be definitely having a little bit of trouble there, uh, but we were definitely discussing the analogy to which this thing works, like we have done already, right? So I just took a two minute break. So we will join back uh, straight away after that. So, uh, we are back, I guess. So I hope, I, I hope you go, guys are like, you know, just refreshed a bit. So, so now we will directly get, get into the code. And uh, what I will try to do is I will comment out things that we have already discussed within the code itself, like what these particular things are done. But I want you people to believe in the things that this particular function does this for right now. Right? So uh, first of all, as I said, TV2, and then now I guess you are able to you know, see these, right? Uh, we have import numpy, import cv2, and import dlib. All these must be installed. But before that, I must tell you people that this particular shape predictor 68 space landmark dot dart file, you can actually download it from, or, or I will be sharing this GitHub code. So the this particular you know, uh, this particular file needs to be there, and it's uh, around 95 MB. So if at all, GitHub I guess allows around 100 MB. So um, if, if at all I, this file doesn't you know exist there, you must have to, you just simply have to download it from cloud. So just if, if at all you simply write shape predictor 68 face landmark dot dart file download, you will get that. You will get that. Yeah. So uh, I will I will add a uh, you know link in the readme there in the GitHub repo I'm gonna share right. So uh, this particular you can say the whatever you are like seeing this particular 68 face landmark thing is the you can say is the Thing that basically does the you can say uh, detect the facial landmarks, right? So it's what shape. Uh, you, can, you can copy the name from there. So it's that, and I would say okay, predictor landmark, right? So now, uh, so since we will be working on our videos directly, so it's same analogy. We have to do that on every frame. That's only right. So uh, now I'm going to be writing series like totally like uh, directly down the uh, video capture interface. So I hope you, uh, if, if at all you are not aware of this, then uh, uh, then it's not a problem because this is some similar syntax. First of all, I need a camera basically. So let's just say camera is my webcam, right? So this webcam is my camera. So I say cv2 dot video capture. There is a function taking video capture. And it takes some arguments. Arguments, if I say zero, then it simply means that at the zero port, there is a camera, right? Which is our webcam, everybody's webcam. That webcam will be read as a, you can say, as a camera. It will be as a camera, right? So, but right now, since I am actually conversing with you, like uh, using this uh, uh, meeting, so basically, uh, my camera is already being accessed by some other programs or processes. Basically, uh, my OpenSea won't be able to access 
my camera. So I will what I will be doing. I've already recorded a simple video. Uh, the only thing is just don't laugh because I hope. Uh, yeah, you you can basically can't see right. Okay, I just forgot. I will share the code part. Right, there is a YouTube video. I will just simply show you what the page exactly is. Dot mp4 and while true. So yeah, uh, some technical glitches, I guess. Uh, right there, there, able to hear at least. So uh, this is a simple while loop. Again, I assume that you all are very much aware of this. What Python syntax is? So you won't be wasting much time there. I have that camera. I say, okay, camera, read me a frame, or read me like I said, said read me a frame. There are multiple frames that is that makes up a, a video, right? So I just said, okay, camera, read me a frame. This is a loop. It's an infinite loop. We'll continue to do it. So like read me a frame. So uh, now what frame? So this you said that uh, this camera actually returns two things: a red and a frame. The red is basically that if, if everything worked or not. It's a boolean variable and it says if everything worked or not. So if red, red is true, I just simply say that yeah, everything worked fine. If red is true, I just save it or in show camera window frame. Before that, I will you know. Share my video in such a way that it's actually my entire screen because now you won't be able to want else see this. So uh, now is it is it is it visible, guys? Visible, right? It's visible, I guess. Uh, my screen is visible, right? Presentation exactly. Oh, but it's actually showing me the presenting to everyone. Guys, some technical glitch. Yeah, so this uh, sublime is visible, right? Yeah, yeah fine. So, uh, so now, the, now the thing is, uh, now you will be able to even see this uh, video that we are seeing, right? That's why I just wanted to share the whole screen. So, uh, see what it show. Imsho basically what it does is whatever frame I actually captured, it just renders it back into the screen. They will see that uh, what exactly this particular uh, you know function means. So uh, and uh, for now, just just forget that I wrote something like this. Just for now, just forget these two lines. Don't even like think about this, right? And what? Just just don't even think about this line for now. Just forget. Right, and we have uh, else. So what I'm trying to do is I will simply just run this once. Sad. So what we have seen is that's exactly this. I'll try to show you what it was basically this this input video. So I basically recorded for the webinar because we are actually what using our uh, you know uh, camera right to, to to actually we are having a video chat. So some process is basically using it. So I recorded this. So don't mind what whatever I am doing there. Once with filter, it looks nice. So uh, I actually like you, you. I use my Windows Media Player to actually view that uh, video file. I, so how to view that video file? The the same way we actually thought thought about like frames and frames. How to do that? OpenCV gives us that interface. So if I run this Python file, you can see that you see that uh, that you know the particular video is run, and uh, frames are being rendered. Right? Frames are being rendered. So this frame exactly has each images that I have. So each of these frames are um, you know you can we have to do these kind of frames. What the, we have to do all the work that we have discussed in this particular frame, and once I have done all this work, uh, work in this frame, I will render this frame again, and then on the next loop, I'm going to do again that for the next frame. So it will be like a filter for the video, right? So uh, as we already you know discussed our part, so we'll be directly jumping into that. The first one we have to do is detect the face. Boom, boom, detect the face. Like that is the first thing that we have to do, right? So we will say, okay, I need a detector. So for detection, it's basically under dlib. I have get frontal face detector. 
this is a function basically that gives me an interface to uh, yeah, what work is it? Uh, the system that is able to detect rental faces, right? That is that is that is okay. Okay, I have my system who is able to basically detect my face. Now I have a, I need a system that is able to given the face image that is able to give, get me the what uh, 68 landmarks, basically the shape of my face. So I can say predictor. Right? I will say if it's written again in a daily itself, it says shape predictor. Don't go over this, uh, you know, this sublime suggestions. I don't know why this gives me suggestions like this. Makes no sense, by the way. So it, it, this particular function takes the path, like the Dart file path, because Dart file is everything, right? As I told you. So that Dart file is needed here for the shape predictor. It needs the Dart file. So if, I, if, I, if I have a 194 version, I, there will be something like shape predictor 194 page time mark. Because there exists something like that, but, but there exists a 194 version, and I'm not sure if it is in Dlib or not. We don't, we won't be needing that much computation or at all, if at all necessary, right? So uh, here we have this particular predictor as well as detector, right? We have this. So now, now our major, major job starts. So first of all, I need to detect the face. So uh, I will comment this as well. This is basically loading the video. So in your case, like if you want to have this whole process in your webcam, what do you have to do? Just replace like it for webcam, replace what? Input.mp4 with zero. Zero, the number zero. Right after installing db 2 and So in, in the readme, I will be updating how to install that. So it's not to worry. So uh, I have to detect my face. So now there is a small concept that you need to just understand that uh, in it's, it's a little bit not too complex, but in, in OpenCV things are handled in the way of RGO BGR. Things in OpenCV are handled in BGR. So BGR means blue channel is the first channel, then green channel, and the red channel. But everything that like the world works in RGB, and I don't know why OpenCV works in BGR. Maybe some computational advantages. Who knows? So uh, BGR and RGB, so we will be going on with RGB. So we need BGR, like we need the last channel to come at front and the front channel to go at last, right? So we'll be using, so these all are what? Multidimensional array only. So we have our NumPy. So here I forgot, we have to do this NP. So why do we have to do this NP? Because we want to write NumPy again and again and again. That's all it, right? So detect face means I have my detections. There's detections there. So I say that detector I have, no? So in detector, I pass an image. Right? So uh, my frame is there. My frame is there, but my frame is in BGR format. It's in BGR format, but Dlib expects frame to be RGB format. So converting this is simple. If at all you are aware of NumPy, then this, you you might catch it by now. Like this is the way to do this. But if you if you if you understand, if you are not aware of NumPy and you think like NumPy, I will see later on. Then just simply imagine that this converts RGB to a uh, BGR, so BGR to RGB or RGB to BGR. Because you have nothing second channel image to the first channel. So basically, what I did that it is zero one two is the natural order, right? So in zero one two we have BGR, the natural order of OpenCV. But the real natural order is RGB. So what I said, BGR. R corresponds to two, so two one zero. Green is a just place, and I will just simply pass one. Just uh, this one is basically scaling the image. Basically, what it does is uh, there might be different faces, right? See, my face is very big, and my face is small. So, if at all I am looking for some patterns, the length of the patterns is also bigger and smaller, right? So like you, the, the the length and the size of the patterns also changes. So, this basically directly and the second parameter is basically scaling up things. And on what level you have to scale? Basically, it's uh, Laplacian and Gaussian kind of pyramids, image pyramid, all stuff. So just forget for that right now. It's basically analog to something like that. So we won't be, uh, you know, playing that. Uh, so and now, now that's 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 basically what that gives us is that gives us a basic, you can say, uh, the list of phases it actually detected, right? So uh, it's a list. I say that if no, what? No faces is detected. Just simply go on to the next frame. If this particular frame has no faces, then I don't need to like move forward, right? Just simply continue. Just continue in this loop, which is gonna again go to camera and then and, uh, read again, right? It's as simple as that. So, uh, so now I have my detections, and it might have multiple faces. I just want to do it in one face that we're gonna do. 
right now i'm i'm the only guy sitting in front of camera so there might be multiple people so you might want to do multiple uh, frames you, you have to again write the loop here we are just looking for the only page so i will say whatever as page it has detected we have written d like what this gets basically does is i will have to write this uh, detect page may this frame thing is basically doing what this basically doing is convert to rgb from d here like that right then then becomes uh, this is a list it returns a list so we we'll again say okay it returns a list and the list of detected faces with the coordinates of bounding boxes okay the coordinate of bounding boxes is detected here now what i have uh, this list length is less than one like there is no face is and just simply go over to the again so now i have to take the first phase once i have the first phase all i have to do is what i have to predict the shape right what shape i have to just predict the associated landmarks so it's again pretty you can say pretty straightforward i would say okay shape what is that predictor within this predictor i have to pass my image or, or you can say the frame that i just got is 2 1 zero now we'll say okay along with that i i just i told you that uh, we need to even uh, say that where exactly the face is right so where is the coordinates of the bounding box or the bounding box of the coordinates exist in d right so i just pass it d d is the first face so this gets us the 60 year landmarks now this shape is not just a list you can pretty much say uh, it's more or less uh, an interface so uh, don't get confused with that because uh, this is not just a list or it might it might have should have a good list but i don't know why they have made it such a complex thing so basically uh, what at all i am concerned about is my 68 points points is basically what if at all see and, and in image i told you that each pix each uh, in, in the image array each element is a pixel value right so in this in this detections in this uh, bounding boxes all this is what just locations or you can say just uh, you can say points uh, in xy coordinate so remember that x is this if if at all you are seeing this image x is this 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 axis is x and this axis is y and it gives me coordinates in x comma y fine so x comma y so 0 comma 1 is 0 in x axis like here and 1 is in y axis something like here right so 2 comma 2 is 2 in x axis 2 in y axis something like this that is what um, uh, the analog to you know the coordinates here so 68 landmarks i will get i, I need i need what 68 comma 2 array if i just simply say that i have points which is Thing, but what shape is what? Sixty-eight comma what two? But uh, before sixty-eight comma two, I would like to show you something here. Uh, what exactly? How is it? Just a second. I would like to show you an image which is pretty. You know, very interesting. This is the facial landmarks that we are exactly talking about. You can see that there are sixty-eight facial facial landmarks. Where is exactly sixty-eight point? You can see somewhere. Yeah, here, yeah. sixty-eight. You can see here, right? So uh, this particular this is visible, right? Particular screen, Chrome is. Yeah. So uh, see here, you can see that this particular girl's image uh, has been landmarked, like the landmarks have been detected, right? So uh, we don't need this one, two, three, four, five, six, and these landmarks. You know, we we don't care about these landmarks. What we care about this is forty-nine to what fifty-five, or you can say forty-nine to sixty. We only care about the outer boundary box, right? This this inner one is also available, like the outer lips and the inner lips. We only care about the outer lips. What is this? Forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four, fifty-five, fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50,
I need I just need just twelve points. So twelve points with each point with x and y, right? And um, I can simply say that its d type is int. So right now, just simply it just makes an empty array of this particular shape. Why? Because we can I can actually index for things. So I say for i in i x in enumerate. I have my uh, uh, what all things range. Forty nine to how many? Sixty. But uh, this is what n minus one. It goes as uh, goes to range function basically goes to n minus one, right? So I need sixty as well. So I will write sixty one. As simple as that. Again, as simple as that. I say okay. Points in points array in i zero, and points array in i one. I need my shape dot part i x. I x is basically what point. So uh, in enumerate when, when I'm actually iterating over the enumerate. I will be zero one two three four five six till twelve or eleven zero zero to twelve or zero to eleven and I X will be forty nine to sixty right so I need my forty nine part forty nine part of the shape there are sixty eight parts right forty nine part of the six I need X part then I need my Y part right so if you want me I can simply draw this as well so just so that we can get what I, what we are actually doing. There is a function to draw simple, 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 simple dots. It's again in Open C. So uh, those people who have done some CGMM, there is a, there was a there was a subject CGMM if you remember. There are some uh, you know uh, algorithms where we learn about lines, then we learn about circles, how to make circles, and a lot of midpoint algorithms and things like that. So those things are actually used here. At that time, nobody told us that these things are actually done. Right? We just learned that okay, this is like this. So basically, it takes a frame. So basically, the input image, right? The input image. Then it takes what? At points, points the center of the circle. So what is the center of the circle? Really, what center of the circle? You will now uh, just, just, just as, as I uh, as I run this particular command, you will know what I am like. Uh, what it exactly means. So two ways you can see thickness. Then there are multiple basically things. And why it is basically I have to do right? Why why? So this two fifty five two fifty five is basically color. Right. Then I have fill. Oh, this, 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 this. See, the thing that is necessary is these two arguments or parameters and the, this one. That is that is all that we need to right now think about. And uh, since we don't have that much time to even understand how circle works, we we'll just simply say circle basically makes my, uh, you know, you can say draws my particular circle. Right. If I run this, okay, what is it exactly? Uh, just a minute. Depth. Okay, so now you can see that I. Oh, there is no errors again. Yeah. So now you can see that what is exactly happening. This is visible, right? This particular window. Yeah. So uh, here, here you can see that we have this. See, see, that's why I made a very, uh, you know, abnormal face in the video. If you'll, if you'll see, this is the reason because when we get like, you know. It's, Expand that particular phase, then you can actually see this. So this is exactly so. These circles, see, see, these circles is what we are trying to make. Right, the two is basically you can say the the, the width of the circle. So if I convert two to five, and of some uh, bigger circles will be drawn. Right, so my my both of my uh, detector as well as predictor is working pretty well. I just simply press Q. So now if you will ask me what this particular statement did, is what is basically did is uh, if I put out press Q, then uh, this. Uh, Particular program will terminate, right? And there is one more thing that I forgot to so destroy all windows. And see if you don't release camera release because there will be some uh, you know zombie processes that might run behind that. I once lost my windows just for due to this. <laughs> there is a thing like that, right? So we are good to go. So now we have these landmarks. So now we have uh, done our uh, fifty percent of the work. So now what? Now going back to the discussion that we were doing, given this bar, you know these points, or you can say these uh, landmarks, I need to approximate a rectangle, right? So rectangle, right? I'll approximate a box, and for that again we have a function in OpenCV. OpenCV is the god of everything. No, it's not true. I'm just paid to say that. And it's no way associated with <laughs> OpenCV. So uh, yeah. So, uh, so before that, I just want to tell you that how basically. Uh, in uh, you know uh, open cv things are defined so again i told you that in an image if this is an image 
this is the x axis and this is the y axis right so okay uh, yeah so uh, this is the x axis and this is the y axis right so this is the typical way how the open cv you know uh, talks to us about the location of things in the image right so uh, here you can see that I, I took x and y then i plotted it so basically what it does is it told me that at this particular location from x and y in this image basically this is where that particular point is right right so then how do we define a rectangle how do i define a rectangle and its position so in open cv not only in open cv it's a general standard to everywhere so wherever you learn about a rectangle the general standard will be x y w h what this simply means is given an image where does the top left corner of the rectangle exist which particular position that is defined by x and y like if they say that this is x and y so this is the top left corner of the rectangle right then w gives me what is the width width basically this 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 i don't know why slope is that line i mean this is the width so this point will be you might have guessed it is x w plus y and then this is the height so this is x comma y plus h and i have the rectangle as x plus w y plus h so now you might have guessed okay with these four particular you know what uh, uh values i can define any rectangle in my whole image right so this is the standard width and height that's why width and height not this left corner and right corner you can even do that but this is the standard way of doing it, right so this is how uh, a rectangle is defined so in similar way we have our uh, what we have our functions which is what what exactly it is uh, we have a function that going to given some points it could detect my bounding box so its name is also pretty straightforward which is nothing but bounding rect that's some innovative name no they made a, they thought of a, a lot of names to come up with this this <laughs> is just joking yeah. Uh, so uh symmetric bounding rect basically finds me a rectangle so a rectangle is defined i told you that x y w x is how this rectangle is rectangle is basically what defined so what we will do is rather than just simply draw the this circle i will say okay just draw this rectangle only so again drawing a rectangle is again super super ha oh super 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 simple given an image i just have to give give the left corner the right corner like the left corner and the right corner of the rectangle right then i'm going to say the color and i'm going to thickness of the line so the left corner what is left corner x comma y what is the right corner and then we have the color so let's just go with what but here you can see see if i write this i now you think okay it's 255 0 comma 0 it basically should be red right but you will see something very uh, you can say uh, unique here this is under fun hey, it's blue man how is that even possible i already told you that open sea works in bgr so what are you it uh, talk about it it is just it seems oh it's bgr only man macha it's only bgr so i'm going to do bgr so 255000 in in open sea is basically what blue 255 with blue so first is blue so now you can see that okay that rectangle so although this rectangle doesn't like you know I can pretty much say that this rectangle basically doesn't much incorporate the whole uh lips might no, not the whole lips right so just again ignore whatever expression i'm making right so um so this rectangle does not incorporate all the pure proper lips right the proper lips are not incorporated very well so i need to do some pre-processing before doing anything with this rectangle so what what See, even what I was supposed to do with this rectangle, I just have to resize it. Right? Before doing that, I need to increase the size of the rectangle. So uh, since I made, so this is why we need to always check before we do something. Right? So here we have the rectangle. So what I'm going to do, it I'm going to say, okay, I calculated, or you can say, get the bounding rectangle, bounding box given the points. Right. So given the points, it will get me bounding boxes. So that bounding box I have, so I just draw my bounding box. Right. Uh, uh, visualize point. And then we have here visualize rectangle. So now you can see that this rectangle is not very well contained in this. Right. So we need to do some pre-processing with the rectangle. 
So the prepositioning is not much of rocket science. It's nothing but just shifting my rectangle. See, remember, I have my rectangle. See, this is my phone. I have my rectangle like this, right? So I'm, what I'm going to do is this x y point, this x y point. I'm going to shift this x y point to up and a little bit here, like diagonally shift the rectangle point to some extent, and then I'm going to increase the w, like the width and height. So it's like shifting to this and actually adding some height and adding some width. So now my rectangle is now a little bigger than what it was supposed to. So now comes to what factor I should do it. Right. So if let's just let's just think about this. If I say that okay, let's just put 10 pixels. Somebody just came in and you're saying, okay, 10 pixels, just do 10 pixels. What is do is just 10 pixels up and 10 pixels left and 10 uh, increase the width by 10 pixels and increase the height by 10 pixels. Let's just imagine that this particular 10 pixel is a, is, is a particular value that you already provided and this is very much variant to scale. What I mean to say is right now my face is some like this scale, right? So if I come closer, my face, the, the image, or you can see the X and Y in the face is basically larger. So if I just simply say 10 pixels, then when I'm close, this 10 pixel won't be enough, right? So we need something that is scale invariant. Like we need something that actually adjusts with the scale. Like even if I like uh, sit down and do do things like that, because I'm you know uh, I have a lot of free time, so I'm just simply gonna do like this. Like I'm gonna make my system more complicated, so so it is more robust. So so for that, what I'm gonna do? So a typical approach, like most of the time, what I use is I will calculate the diagonal length. Like the diagonal length is going to tell me uh, uh, a pretty much I will get a pretty much good idea about the rectangle. So if, if the diagonal length is pretty big, it just simply means that I am closer. The diagonal length is pretty small. I am uh, pretty much far. So uh, so you can even say that you can even so see this particular simple approach, simple hack has made you a system that can actually detect whether a person is coming closer or uh, going far. How just have to detect the bounding box of the face. So you have the bounding box. So now in each frame, what are you going to do? You want to check whether this diagonal length is increasing or decreasing. So if it's increasing, okay, it's coming forward. If it's decreasing, it's okay, it's coming going uh, back. And you're going to do this and you're going to deploy and you're going to say, hey man, I'm an AI legend. And all you have done is just simple hack. So these simple hacks going to work a lot. So so uh, so we need just need to find this what uh, diagonal length, right? So diagonal length is what I would say. Okay, I need to find the diagonal length. I have right now. So I would say I have width and height. What is diag basically? Diagonal length. I would say uh, width square plus height square. That is my diagonal length. Hypotenuse. Uh, you know. So to the power zero point five to the root is what my diagonal is. So uh, this diagonal can tell me a lot about my. Diagonal. So now now uh, I have already worked this out. So that's why that's why I came up with a threshold. So it's basically the ratio to which I am increasing and decreasing. It's nothing but but diagonal into or diagonal diagonal into one by four. Basically, it's uh, one by fourth of the diagonal length. That is what I'm going to shift and increase the height. That is simply so. I just came up with this one by four. I started with two by four, I guess. Then then I saw that okay, it's actually shifting a lot. So I went with uh, one by four height. Right? So it's, it's, it's like that. But right now, even though you have provided the one by four, it is to some, you can say some dynamic threshold, or you can say some dynamic value that actually takes into account the amount of, or you can say the size of the face, right? So uh, so now I have my new x, y, w, h as what? X minus ratio means x minus ratio means x is in this axis. It means x, like, like shift the rectangle to left, Y minus ratio, shift the rectangle to top. Then W means increase the width of the ratio or oh, uh, rectangle. So uh, while I shifted, I also increased the rect uh, rectangle width and height. Basically, something like this. The rectangle was here. I just shifted it and I increased the rectangle like this. Right? I hope it makes sense. So now again, try to watch this. So now you can see, yeah, this pretty much face works. Right. I should have even uh, uh, did this in the video, but I forgot to do this. So anyways, you can you can feel the feel the, feel the so now I will just stop. It. Make it embarrassing. Right. So uh, we've done that part. So now 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 what we need? We have the rectangle. We are super cool. So now I'll comment it out. I don't need that rectangle. So remember uh, drawing rectangles and circles. You know those algorithms. If, if at all you are aware of the CGMM stuff. 
so that they, they are time consuming remember so we need as, as much fps uh, i can have so that it really looks realistic right now i am actually doing a 30 30 fps video so in your home when you will be doing uh, using a webcam it will actually uh, work on around 12 to 13 fps 15 fps at max 15 fps at max right in this in this particular case and not not in 15 it will uh, move down to 10 so but still you will feel that good essence of working right so what we have here uh, we have shifted that uh, our rectangle so now what we need i need to take that what rectangle and you need to get that rectangle right so that is my crop ellipse i can say so crop ellipse is what so again we are going back to our discussion in how to crop the images where we were yeah here i told you that this is the row this is the column and things like that and things like that and things like that right but remember again remember this fun fact that this is x this is x this is y and whatever in open cv open cv open cv tells us x comma y right but in reality what is first term that is written that is a row so row cross column that is what exactly i was talking about in the in the, in the starting what that uh, just take this as x is this and y is this or this is the first term that we are defined right but when we are talking about multi dimensional arrays that numpy understands what does numpy do numpy says okay tell me row row man i only know row so if you tell me to take the first dimension i will take the row to say you second dimension will take the column i don't know anything so now now, now open cv is also again like that i don't know anything i am only going to talk about x and y so you need to do that changing so basically what is the changing it's not that rocket science again what x is in open cv this is i'm just like announcing this or you can say uh, bolding this enough all capitalized right all if at all we were chatting it's like all capitalized whatever is x in open cv it is it is basically column it is basically column in numpy and whatever y is it is basically row in numpy fine super cool i like the forwarding again so basically what i wanted to say is given this frame like given the image right what i need to do is first dimension is row right i need to row so from y row to y plus h row x to x plus w row now you say oh oh my god i don't understand this uh, i want to see you no know, i don't understand this so i say okay we will again try to to get that crop ellipse part now you can see here a pidusa a chota sa like a small one here like you get the ellipse here and i hope you are able to like detect this small ellipse here this is exactly what we wanted right so i'm i'm opening up my mouth and it's again getting embarrassed okay i just closed it right so this is exactly what crop ellipse is i just showed crop clips so now you can see that how simple it is i just want to look into crop ellipse as i said crop crop ellipse so now you understand why y is here and x is here right i hope you understand this look at the chat once people are like all parts are like lips eyes nose are considered lips um uh, so all parts like lips eyes nose are considered lips so basically each points are an element in a list fine there are state points and the image that i showed you like the image that i showed you basically is what the image that i showed you basically tells me which index part belongs to which particular point so that's why we here write 49 to 60 remember that image only you know this one this one 49 to 60 the outer part right so that is what uh, yeah yeah ah so uh, what we were talking about yeah so crop clips now i have so now what the so now basic thing is to resize this resize this crop image so it's again very simple so now you will just think that this is very simple like so this cropped lips i would say and that what i would say simply belongs to the size so see need to realize what takes is it says okay which image to resize and what is the final image size that is the second argument the third argument it takes and fourth argument side by side what it takes is the rate of change or you can say the change in the the, the ratio of change in the x dimension and the ratio of change in the y dimension basically ratio of change means uh, i can say that if i want to double the size of the image in the x direction i would say fx equal to 2 and if i want to change the double or you can double the size of the image in the y direction i would say fx that is exactly what i want 
I don't want to define the shape. If at all I want to define the shape, then what would I, I would have done? I would first calculate the lip. Uh, say, uh, you can say the size of the or you can the shape of the lips, right? And I will multiply it by two, and I will provide it instead of this x or this none. Basically, who is going to do all that work, right? So see which the resize or open CV people have already given this to us. Super cool. So now I have the resized lips, right? So uh, do you want to see the resized lips as well? So we will just simply see that once again. So that you guys believe. Okay, so resized lips, you can see that its size is bigger. Right? We have the resized lips. Now I'm going to open my mouth. So we're going to just cut it down because it's again embarrassing. So now we have this. Uh, so we have some uh, comments here. No, we don't have. Problem text is the best. Problem text is surely the best, I guess. But I'm not, I'm only gonna say I guess because I'm not paid to say so. Like they don't they're not paying me enough. Just joking again. So uh, so uh, we have that resize stuff. Now we need to do that seamless clone. So uh, so now you will be laughing because basically seamless clone again. <laughs> there's nothing but CV to do seamless clone. Boom bam boom. Like it's it's that 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 good, basically CV two dot seamless clone. So this function takes a lot of arguments. First of all, it takes uh, a a uint eight. Basically, you can simply say that this is an eight bit eight bit image. Eight bit image means uh, uh, the real way how images are stored. Right, eight bit is two fifty five the maximum value. Right, in eight bits, two fifty six. It's zero to two fifty five. So basically, the, that is why eight bit images. Basically, these pixel values are stored in as an eight bit integer. So we need to convert that whatever our image is basically in size lips in uh, we uint because it's a, it's a necessity there. And then we need to give that. This is the source image. Like the source image means this resize lips is my source image. So this is this is the airplane in our analogy. Airplane, right? This is the airplane. And then what is my mountain and river and things like that? What is that? That is my frame. Right. So now comes the tricky part. Like tricky part is means the, uh, the 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 real thing that we that we need to do. So we will write here real thing, and we will talk about the real thing, and we will write here center. That is also we need to talk about, and we will here just simply say normal clone. There is another one which is mirror clone. So that is or different. Just simply assume that there is nothing written over there. I wrote nothing there. Just assume that I have put this close this. Uh, bracket here over center. So we will be discussing everything here. But this real thing, what is this real thing is basically the mask. Mask basically remember, remember that uh, what that uh, lips I I gave you. Oh, that airplane I gave you. So airplane in in airplane there was I told you that uh, without just just by copying one over the other, uh, what it basically does is that square thing also appears. So using C seamless clone, we can uh, you can uh, remove that square thing. But it does. It doesn't always mean that it will get us a very pure image, like just just the airplane image. It is only possible when the background of the airplane image. See, if it doesn't make sense, I will I will, I will make that you know uh, easy for you using the board. But uh, if at all it's understandable, then uh, I don't think that we need to you know switch back and forth. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, you need that particular airplane, like smooth particular airplane over that image. Then it simply means that whatever you want to do is. The, air, the the image which has airplane in it must have a constant background, no matter what color. Just that you need a constant background. At that time, seamless clone will work like a magic, and you don't need to provide any uh, information as to where exactly the airplane is, right? So the real thing is the information that tells where exactly the airplane is, right? So that is particularly like things that basically tells us. Where exactly, or, or what are all things should be considered is basically known as mask. Mask. What is mask? We will discuss. The real thing is that. But in this case, in this case, in this case, uh, that, uh, like basically, if, I, if at all I have that airplane in that airplane image, let's just assume that all, all the background were what constant, and at that time there is no need for real thing because seamless clone is intelligent enough to remove that background. But my lips, as you see, there is a lot of bushy hairs, right? And then there is a lot of skins and things like that. So these are not constant. These non-constant things. If I do this without this seamless uh, real thing, without defining the real thing, what it will do is I want you guys to do this by your own without defining the real thing. Without defining the real thing, to do that, you will see a lot of blurry stuff going over here. 
because it is trying to you know uh, trying to uh, make sure that that square or that rectangle stuff does not come up it is trying to make sure something like that so doing that will just mess up things so it will look like as a monster or make it right so uh, although once you do this uh, filtering wala stuff it also looks like monster but still it's a worst monster right and that's what that's really different so the real thing must be defined so how do we define real thing like how do i say that these are the parts of lips that i need to consider just remove all the rest of the parts so now the question now we come back to again what our landmarks see our landmarks basically tells us so basically what my landmarks basically tells us is okay buddy hope this is visible this is visible right yeah so basically what i will just i think this is size on a little bit and i will just try to these thing i don't we don't need right we don't need this thing we just keep, only care about these these particular values so what it happened is this rectangle is what we are talking about and what we need is we only need this part this part this lips part right we only need this lips part so now we were talking about oh man how do i you know recognize this lips part we already recognize this lip, uh, lips part we only need to do is make a mask out of it mask basically i need to uh, you know some way i need to tell my uh, seamless clone function or open cv that this is the thing that i need to have and this is the thing that i need not to have so for that mask is basically a boolean array boolean array means whatever the, this boolean is very boolean array so basically what boolean array is nothing but whatever the values inside the array is zero or one or true or false so where wherever you see in the boolean array it is exactly like my input source image source with the resize image the size of the boolean array also will be image this uh, particular uh, source image which is the length of this or which is the uh, size of this rectangle right so within this rectangle in the source image i have the pixel values that corresponds to my lips but in this boolean array there is true or false and this true means this particular should be considered false means this particular should not be considered so in this case if i convert this to a mask what i will be having i will be having a boolean array with like that's a very bad lip but anyways all these values outside all these values outside will be zero right and all these values inside will be one no problem there so uh so uh so yeah somebody commenting on this so yeah so adverb is also here so uh we need this we need to make this boolean array right this boolean array how do i make this boolean array and there again comes open cv to rescue open cv has a function which is known as fill convex polling which basically means that you remember this uh, image wala thing that uh, in, in in our childhood we used to you know the, the the only thing that we used to do with our personal computers were open paint and draw something right that was the only thing we were able to do uh, so uh, so uh, that was only what i did basically you also did that now don't look at me like that right you all did only that so uh, basically only that uh, uh, you paint wala thing so if you remember we used to cry to do the painting so just simply assume that how rubbish is that we used to cry mamma painting banane chai do pen banane do just simply just for painting man so uh, that painting there is a thing known as like something like this like a paint can type something like this something like this something like this was there was an icon right so once you click that particularly to a location what it tries to do it fill that particular color to all the that particular area until and unless a boundary covers it right basically fill convex poly also does that thing what it does is given the set of points it joins all the points like this 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 and within inside that it will color or it will fill the value that i provide so why this is fill convex poly basically because it finds a convex contour or you can say a convex hull behind or given the points it tries to find a convex hull convex hull just Just, just simply understand convex hull as something that is that is made by covering up. See, there is a there is hundred there are multiple ways in which I can connect these dots. Like if I have three dots, I can connect these 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 like this. If I have four four dots, I can do this or I can do this, right? 
multiple ways I can connect this. So convex cell basically connects the outer boundaries. So given this slips, convex cell will connect, connect these outer boundaries and fill in the values that I'm providing. So let's just assume that if I give if I give convex cell this particular image, right, or, or, or a particular image which is full of zeros. Full of zero means full of false. A particular an image of this size, full of false, and I uh, tell it that these points lies in these these locations. Do one thing: fill true in all inside all these. We fill true inside all these functions, all these values. So doing that will give me exactly what I need, which is this, right? No doubt. Simply means again, I will repeat. So what I did is I create an image with, uh, with false values, like total false values. I create an image with total false values, like zero zeros, total zeros. And what I said that okay, fill in the values inside this lips with one. Or true. So whatever I have now is my boolean value. Fine. The boolean array that I wanted, the mask I wanted, that's exactly what I needed. That is what we're going to do intelligently. We want to. This is another step that is a little bit clumsy enough not to understand, but I hope hope you got this. Here I can say we'll be doing the seamless. So this is the last step. So those people who are like, uh, okay, done. Uh, I'm too much information. This is the last step. Right, so this is resizing lips, and this is cropping lip, lips, 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 seamless cloning, right? So just simply say that saste bhasha mein or desi bhasha mein copy kar. So uh, uh, those people who are good with Hindi, they will be knowing. Oh, dude, this is my boy. So, anyways. We have this seamless. So before seamless cloning, we need the real thing. So what is real thing? Real thing is a mask, like a mask. So before that, I need something. I need to make before ma making mask. I need to make a uh, array or an image with zero, with zero, all zeros inside, with all zeros inside, right? So I say I have a mask with which is all zeros. So we have a num numpy function which says we can use zeros or zeros like. So what it exactly is? You can say uh, basically what, what you can say is crop lips or resize lips shape, right? Whatever you want, uh, you can actually use for crop lips. So let's go for crop lips dot shape. What it basically does is it takes the uh, row and column. That's it. Row and column. It's like shape is basically gives me the shape of the uh, multi dimensional array, right? So in this case, it would be height, uh, height, cross width, cross channel. I don't need channel, right? I just need height and width. Like I just need a image of single channel, right? The single channel that that is what I need. So as I said, that shape gives me an array of or a tuple of three, uh, shape three. I don't need the last shape. I just need the height and width. So with the height and width, I created a mask that is necessary. And now what I do that cv two dot fill convex solid. This is that function that we were talking about. Convex solid takes the mask, like the mask that needs to be filled. And the points, so basically the points. Now comes the tricky part. Here again, the tricky part. Now you will be saying, "Oh, how many tricky part, bro?" It's totally understood. No. Remember for one thing, or or you can say just remember one thing that the points that we have, like the points has some values. This point array, this point array has some value x and y, right? I won't write it here. I will I will write it here. What basically is this point value? This point. Array has x and y values. This x and y corresponds to the original image. Remember the original image in which I was like I had the whole full person as an image. The whole image that you are actually seeing is actually the reference for this x and y. But right now my image is the small portion of this x and y, which starts with where the rectangle, the bounding box, rectangles, starting point. Fine, it's the starting point, right? Basically, the x and y I have this particular point is what x and y, and here I have x one comma y one, which is basically a point that is landmark. What I have to do is I need to convert this x one y one or the point in terms of this x and y. It's very simple. I just have to minus x and y from them. Think about a bit, like give it a thought. Give it a give it a little thought as to uh, uh, what why I actually did it. I'm actually see what I'm actually doing is whatever bounding rectangle I had, 
whatever bounding rectangle I had, I am I am minusing it. I am taking a I am subtracting it from the points, basically the points, the points that were that were basically in reference to what the full image was. Right now, I have my full image is this rectangle, so I am converting this rectangle, these points in uh, in uh, you can say uh, uh, as compared to or in reference with this particular rectangle, right? And what values I have to fill in? Two fifty five. Right. But so for now, I will just simply say comment it out, comment it down, and I will try to. Show you the mask. Here you can see, 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 see. Now you can see the mask. Here you can see the mask, chota chota mask. See, in the inside the lips there is one. One means true means white color, like two fifty five white color, right? True. And then there is you have. What do you have here? The rest of the things are white. Right. The rest of the things are. Black and inside that is we have white, right? So uh, I will switch that out. So that's exactly what mask looks like. So now I'm going to do a little, little, uh, a little crop image color thing. This is this is just to make sure that my image is in the same way. So it's it's also not necessarily needed, or you can simply say that uh, it's not at all needed, by the way. But uh, if you if you think about this, uh, I actually made a mask out of the resized lips, not the uh, oh, sorry. The crop lips, not the resized lips. Meaning, I basically whatever lips I had, like in the in the in the original image, I actually made a mask of that particular what lips, not the resized lips. Resized lips means not the double sized lips. Why? Because I have no information regarding the points I have when the image or when the this particular rectangle will be double the size. I can't simply say that this x and y should also be doubled. That will be dumb, right? That, that that's not correct, right? What I'm trying to say is, I have this rectangle, I have these points here, and I have just changed it to double the size. So it doesn't mean that I these points value or these x and y can also be doubled. These x and points cannot be doubled, right? There is some other relations to it, which this particular value should be there, right? And for that, what I did that I actually made the mask. I actually made the mask like the mask, the mask of the image. I actually made the mask of the image with the Normal cropped image. Then I resize the mask itself. Like I resize the masked image itself. That will be fine, right? So what I did is I actually made a mask that is basically of from the normal image, the normal image only. So I need to what? Uh, uh, multiply this mask with my resized lips. Multiply this mask with resized lips is basically telling that I have these lips over here, right? And I have some garbage over here, like my uh, muche and all those things. Right? So these things should be ignored. And I have a mask, like I have a true/false value that says that these particular values are lips and these are not. So what if I? So these are zeros everywhere, and this is one everywhere. So what if I element-wise multiply both of these images? Means this particular image multiplied by this, this particular image pixel multiplied by this. In the end, if I do the element-wise multiplication, what I will get? I will get an image where everything is zero except the inside of the Lips and but this time inside of the lips, like inside of the lips, is not just one, but the true value of what the lips was. I will show you what this exactly means in in a moment. Just 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 give me a second. Let's just think that uh, I'm doing something like this something something. We have the crop. I say input. Out. We will ex I will explain what this basically means. Right. So uh, we have this crop in six minutes. So I said uh, I have this mask. And as type, and this with cropped lips again. Ah, uh, problem types is telling me to buy this because I'm trying to save it. So it just simply says it just simply says you just have to ignore it. It is resized lips now. Again, I'm going to resize it. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to simply copy this out. So now my crop lips is something like this. I will see what exactly this crop list basically is. It's a resize lips. Now see. Uh, we have a little bit of. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. See, this is exactly what I was talking. See, 
all the other values are black black means zero i just have my lips there so we will wait until i open my mouth see see so by element by multiplication i flagged out flagged out all those things that are not my lips just my lips that is exactly what i took that is what this line does what this this see just forget this line just forget this line this this, this particular code this one this as type bool or expand dibs just forget it just simply think that i just masked out my image basically i i took all the pixel values that are lips and disregarded all the or uh, discarded all the values that are not lips right so basically i can say that mask out values or you can say pixel lips pixel of lips that's what i did and then i resized it so now there is no problem with all the uh, unnecessary thing up here right there is no need to uh, panic about the unnecessary thing i have here right so since i need no no need to panic about the and uh, you know you can say what uh, unnecessary things it's very simple and intuitive to make the real thing so what is the real thing then? the real thing was the mask that just tell me whether this is lips or not so it's again pretty straightforward i just say to int 8 The, the the real thing is basically the mask right again the mask but i don't have the resized mask i just have the resized image so either you can resize the mask or you can simply say whatever you are uh, you can say whatever your resize lips is which has lips is an array right i need to increase all those positions so this is basically you can say uh slicing or you can say uh, array comparison so just uh, you just have to just believe in this for a second that's what i would say because this is a uh, numpy wala stuff or it's you can simply say that i traversed all the pixels in the resized lips and i selected only those pixels that has value greater than 0 0 means that are not black that are not masked out i selected only those pixels creating a mask out of it i hope this made a little sense but you can just simply assume that this is like this so creating a mask for what similar clone and uh what do we have here that's it that's it that's it uh real thing and then we have similar clone and we have all these things necessary and we don't need the rectangles and all these things are there and just let's give it a run and we have some errors which is see ah center is not and again uh the center is necessary because center is basically the center of the rectangle which is where i want to put this values in right so basically that is the center and center is what x plus X plus whatever the width is, right? What are the width is? I can say X plus. I have the width. The width divided by two. And Y plus X divided by two. This is what uh, X plus width divided by two means. This X plus width divided by two here, and Y plus height divided by two is here. So the center. That is what I need. If I put on the center there, and You will see that I have not shown the what a frame. If I show my frames, getting pretty slow. Oh, I actually calculated it in the wrong place before doing anything, right? The real thing is correct, right? Two fifty five into resize lips. Zero 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 zero. Let's enter that in. Oh, again, this this exactly. This basically returns. So I forgot. Basically, it does not just actually copy. It. So here we have our beautiful face with the. So we will wait until we open my mouth. See. so uh so i guess this 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 actually does our job so this is what uh typical you know instagram filters or snapchat filters are supposed to do see the 
So pretty much exactly is what we need. So see, you see the power of uh, that zing amazing ain't it? Yeah. Right. So this is exactly what I would want to do. So this is all about you know this particular thing of doing this. And uh, now I will show you something that uh, uh, given this understanding of things that we just did, there is uh, multiple things that you can do. So that's just uh, an you know just an uh, you can I will show you this. Uh, there is no need to be present this anymore. So all these you can say. Uh, understanding of all these things that we did similar approaches are used in uh, actually a task i did earlier so this is another uh, you can say a snapchat filter or instagram filter where this thing works see basically that head uh, there is there there was a new thing right uh, guess the gibberish and that there was uh, uh, truth or dare or something like this so all these things like this works only this is also based on facial landmark only. What this facial landmark is, I actually choose these two face landmarks. I approximated a rectangle out of it for uh, knowing the orientation of the my uh, head, so that you can see here that if I if I look here and here, it actually these images also go, uh, went on to you know shifts again and again. It, it's also oriented in the same way, right? This is again like that, and then there is another one. This is the face swap. So there is a sim this is exactly the same thing, seamless cloning only again, but this is a little bit of advanced seamless cloning. So this is the facial, uh, this is my brother there. So uh, this is not me, basically this is me. My face is swapped again, so I, I hope you guys can see this. Right, so this is also uh, face swapping, again, same concepts only. There is a little bit of uh, other thing that the knowledge triangulation and things like that. Then there comes a uh, cam scanner. So this is a little bit different, but uh, similar computer vision technology only. See, this is the cam scanner that we made. This normal cam scanner that is. See, you can see that it's actually scanning. And uh, it takes it over there and scans it. See, and again, we have something nice here. And this is a little bit of a DL also involved. This board MNIST, basically what it does is, uh, this is your screen basically so you write something on your uh, uh, you know on the screen and the machine uh, the time move with your face in real time it's basically the same way that it's actually actual real time and it's the lips is also getting that uh, uh, what is that lips is also getting uh, uh, enlarged same way same way it is happening so uh, here you can see uh, this is a little bit of deep learning involved so uh, so now you might think that this is uh, this is used with some uh, other higher concepts, which means like detecting where I actually wrote it. It's, a very, very, it's, it's again a very simple hack that we to do. So here you can see that its computer automatically detects what kind of number I actually wrote. Right. So this is something involved with that as well. But this was all I was talking about when uh, detecting simple patterns. Right now you can see that I, I write eight, then it detects eight, then then I write nine. Then it detects nine, puts a bounding box over there. This is another one. And then another one, this is simple face recognition. Face recognition is simple. A simple API is available for this. Yeah, it's as our caskets, but that's an open CV basically. But uh, this this was basically on FaceNet that the Facebook was developed. So this was more deep learning all that stuff. Era. So this is unknown. And then my friend Rohit was there, right? This is again a simple. This is, this is all like I don't know. Last year, last two, last year I made these. What this I just remembered. So now this comes the. This is the one that uh, in which uh, even if you hide your face, it's able to detect. It's basically a tracking based algorithm. So uh, this is like it detects. It's uh, it's me. Like it's showing Manu and then and then even if I hide my face, it's able to detect. It's not frame by frame facial recognition. So tracking is involved. So. Uh, so now I now I I try to hide my face. Now that that finger is basically to, for me to see whether this is particularly working or not, right? So uh, this is again another thing, and this is a very ad, not uh, an advanced concept in CNNs. So it's basically a new style transfer. What it basically is nothing. Uh, you the content in this image basically the content that is in the image the buildings are basically re-rendered with the style in this image. So you can see that these content these buildings are rendered the style in this image right so this is neural style transfer this is also a deep learning concept it's a it's a higher level computer vision you just need to understand 
you need to have a good understanding what CNN basically does. Then you start doing, uh, you know, content and uh, style matching in uh, CNN. So, uh, so I guess that was enough uh, for as an introductory. Uh, now it's gonna go from start to end now. See, exactly, this is what I don't like about our uh, PowerPoint presentation. You know, simply say, okay, a slideshow it is from current slide. See? So uh, the spelling is not wrong. Actually, I say things because I'm an, uh, I'm very, uh, you know, I'm a pretty embarrassed. I, I, I get embarrassed very easily. So I'm, I'm, you can probably say I'm too much of an introvert. So thanks for at least, you know, sticking around for the till the last time. And I guess it's it's been around one and a half hours something, like that, right? How much time it has been for us? Oh, it's been two hours. Thank you for staying, guys. If you are all uh, those who have started, so you can find me in these platforms there. It's not that tough to remember manipulate these right. Every everywhere it's possible to change. I've changed it to manipulate these right. You can find me here. Right, uh, so you can find me there, and then accept the of uh, Instagram stuff. So that's less of a you know uh, official thing. So in Instagram, I'm a confused neuron. So you can actually ping me there as well. Or you can ping me anywhere as well. If at all you need any kind of support, any kind of you know, if at all you want to uh, start with this uh, uh, to venture into computer visions and uh, deep learning and things like that, you can definitely contact me. Or even if you want to do some advanced stuff as well, I'm 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 open to opportunities. With you people, so it's okay. So uh, we can do some projects as well. So it's not it's not that tough. You can you can any any time you can any time call me. I'm an idol kind of stuff. Six o'clock you 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 message me in the morning. I I, I probably not have slept till then. So um, basically you can ping me. In. But after that on day I will not be available. I'll be sleeping like like a you know like a, a ox or something. So that's it. So that's it. Guys, uh, thank you so much for having me, and uh, I would say, Saket, thank you so much. It's it's been it's been a while that I have actually talked talked to people, man. So uh, thank you so much, man. So I I I, uh, uh, I just loved that you actually loved this, and uh, uh, looking forward basically to all of you, to, you know, to, to your feedbacks. And if at all I I you know kind of uh, invoked some creativity or some uh, interest in you people in computer vision, then that's a great gain for me. Like uh, I have some new talents, like at least I brought some new talents to the field, right? So I um, uh, hope to meet you soon, all one day. Maybe that's that's not normal to say, but still, <laughs> right? Uh, right now, uh, being in being at home for about sixty days, I'm like meeting anyone. Although I am an introvert kind of guy, if at all you uh, send me into a party, only you know I will be like going okay. I will be the most extrovert guy that is ever in this world, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that's it. Uh, I am talking too much. I talk too much like this. So, okay, people. Uh, uh, back to you, Sakit. Thank you so much once again. Bye bye. So bye bye all. Bye 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 bye.